over here. I just Sorry, see buddy. It, when I look at how it looks, it's like so empty there. With like <laughs> We're here, guys. Tiny We're live. Wide wardrobe, like nothing behind. You're looking at the man, a homeless man who only lives in an office here. I, I, I just timer. moved in here two days ago. I set up my desk, you know, I have the screens. That's all I need. <laughs> a man dedicated to poker guys we're here we're live brand new poker live podcast that's right we're back after a couple month hiatus haven't done many videos this year at all but we're getting back after it strong we had andrew Neme on the podcast on monday we got garrett adelstein steen on tomorrow thursday the high stakes beast himself from live at the bike we also have later this month we're going to be having on alex foxen as well too who i know a lot of people have been interested to hear more about number one gpi player in the world also going to have it on my buddy Chance Cornith from uh, Chip Leader Coaching. We're going to do a little week with them. Uh, me and Lex are talking about doing a podcast as well, Lex Feldhouse. And uh, yeah, man, we got a bunch of cool stuff coming up. We're going to run it up Reno. I might be going to Montenegro for Triton Poker as well too in May. And we just played on Poker After Dark last night. PLO, where I didn't make a fucking hand against these guys who played every hand. So if you want to go watch that <laughs> back on Poker Go, joining me today on the podcast is a man one of the best poker players in the entire world when it comes to cash game, when it comes to tournaments, when it comes to being entertaining at the tables, when it comes to being entertaining on social media, when it comes to being entertaining on the stream, he occasionally will do when it comes to being entertaining in general. My God, we're joined by the man, the myth, the legend, Stefan Sondheimer. Stefan, did I miss? I feel like I might have missed one thing there. Did I miss one thing or what did, what did I miss in that? I think that was that was perfectly right. Like, uh, uh, I, I liked it, so it was a good one. AKA, AKA Run Goose Run, AKA Goose Core. Any other names they might know you by out there? Uh, the Germans, Alda Falda. That's a great one. I love it. What was that one? What'd you say? Alda Falda. It's a German name. All right. I'm gonna, I'll, 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 I'll let one of the other guys call Stefan that one. I'm going to stick I'm gonna stick with the three. I don't know what he just said right there. It's so. too easy. You know, like the, the Americans made the goose thing up. It's, uh... I kind of like the goose thing, man. Stefan, so people out there who've been watching, who might not know much about you, or they don't watch some of the high rollers, they kind of, I feel like nowadays it's kind of hard to really know a lot about someone unless you're watching their vlog on a consistent basis. And I think somebody like you kind of bounces around a few different areas and you're doing a few different things now. So why don't you give people a little bit, like the 30 second thing you tell them about yourself, if you were going to meet somebody and they were like, oh, you know, who it is about you? What, what are you all about? Well, um, let's try that. Um, I'm like typically not not the Vegas type of poker player. I'm I'm the like the, the nice guy from around the corner that grinded up from NL2 to like NL5K cash game. Mm -hmm. Stopped that because stars fucked it up. Met some buddies that love to play tournaments and, and mainly kept winning them. Um, Fedor, for example. So I thought like, you know, those those idiots, you can do the same. So I started playing those tournaments and now we are here doing both. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty accurate. You start out, you start with small stakes, you grind your way all the way up to high stakes. You're one of the best players on Poker Stars. You're in the in the German crew, friends with all the German guys. And then the Fedor started. Uh, you know, Fedor won about 155 million dollars in one year playing tournament poker. And then you're like, hey, let me get in here. And it turns out, what do what do you? I guess what are your takeaways? Because are you playing a lot of tournaments right now too, or what's kind of been your your, your approach for this year? Are you kind of switching up, going back to maybe more cash game? um yeah the main thing is that i want to travel less it was just like the last two years were, were so like draining just yeah. just traveling traveling and actually lose like i wouldn't say like falling behind but like the top online stuff so what you said was really really nice but it's just not true for the moment like uh not definitely not one of the best cash game players on pokestars um because it's just like those guys they have the time to keep working you know those linus love guys out there and like not just talking about the best but like just take the top 20 or something um and now i felt like it's it's fun again you know like i battled it out the last days a little grind grinding it out and like sim 500 as well uh, i feel i feel comfortable in the tournaments it's, it's like especially in in the in the small runner fields where i know everybody but um yeah this year it's just um traveling traveling less uh picking the right spots uh you said you're coming to montenegro that's like one of my next spots Ooh. love to be there you will love it. It's great. Yeah, they got in touch. The Triton Poker guys got in touch with me very recently, and I think they're at, they were seeing if I was interested in coming out there doing some uh, like commentating, like Lex and I think Randy were doing. Randy Lou. So yeah, Lex and Randy. Yeah. So I mean, I, I kind of want to. I don't even know where Montenegro is. I'll be honest with you, Stefan. But it does sound like fun to get out there, kind of do a little commentary. I love what they're doing. They're doing some really really cool shows with the high stakes cash games and the short deck tournaments and the high stakes tournaments with the different player pools. So. 
we'll see. It could be could be something in the works there, man. But it's kind of uh, it's kind of nice to hear you saying positive things about the place because I was gonna go to the Rio or Rio Rio for the party poker event, but yeah, I kind of I decided to ultimately uh, stay. Yeah, away. You will love it. I mean, last year I've been there, um, and actually I was traveling like ten days before or even two weeks around Montenegro. It's just a it's a beautiful place, and the place itself, the the hotel, uh, the venue where everything takes place is is awesome as well. It's just like a brand new five star hotel that is somehow always empty so uh, you have the like it's probably the best must be the best spa area in montenegro that you just have all for yourself and uh well there you have that private beach in a nice little bay and it's just it's a good place um fingers crossed for having good weather but um it's it's awesome do you, uh is that one of the things that you enjoy the most about poker and traveling is getting to go to places like a montenegro and 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 spend time in these destinations that people kind of dream about going to? Um, yeah, like I, I like it a lot to not fly too far. So that's the first thing. It's just a, a one hour or one thirty flight from Vienna. That's great. Um, and then it's just really nice if you can combine things, you know, like you have a good time there, you can see the, the, can, the country. It's like different. Uh, I think I've told myself for four or five years now already, that uh, one day I will travel the East Coast in the US because like I'm always in Vegas, then I, on the way back, like why not put that in there? But it's like, it's like just so far away and after Vegas, you're always pissed so you don't get to travel and like that stop not too far away, you're just grinding there for one week mm -hmm. and then you have another week to do to do nice stuff. That's That's great. All right, so I'm looking at the map right now where Montenegro is, and I'm going to be honest, I never would have guessed this. It's uh, it's in between Serbia, Bosnia, Albania, and Kosovo. I thought it was in Asia. So hey, I'm learning. It is what it is, guys. Someone in the in the in the, in the uh, comments said I'm a geography fish. I definitely am. It's right by Greece, across the sea from Italy. Okay. I mean, yeah, like it's it's like the sea compared to Italy, and Italy sounds great, right? It's it's even just in your mind going to Italy sounds great, does it? I guess, yeah. Why not? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you don't have pizza there, but uh, it's, it's it's great, and not in Asia. That we're just playing with Hong Kong dollars. Okay, yeah, that's why I I think I think when I think of Triton Poker, I think of it's in Asia. So I assumed much bigger was in Asia. It is what it is, guys. I'm not a professional. I'm good at some things. I'm not good at some things. Geography is not one of them. So <laughs> yeah, kind of for the people out there. So you're playing a lot of uh the two five zoom on stars. You're playing some twenty five fifty ten twenty cash game on stars as well. And then also for the tournaments, you're playing. Uh, the bigger buy-in tournaments, anything up to what, what like a 300K buy-in or 100K buy-ins or what's kind of the regular stakes for you when it comes to uh, playing yeah, tournaments? I mean, like above 50K, there is no regular stakes, I would say. It's just, I mean, everyone knows there are, it's not like only your money you're playing with. Mm -hmm. So there's a backing crew for, for all the people that are playing it. And then it's just a decision whether it's a, a soft tournament and it's whether it's worth it. So I... I played the million last year. I played the 300K two times. Like, yeah, Any, anything is possible. But I mean, yeah, there's no regular level for for the high rolls. You just play play anything that's worth it. Hmm. Are you playing a lot of the 10K buy-ins now as well too? Or do you uh, do you not try to focus on those besides maybe main events? Um, I don't know which 10Ks you're talking about. Uh, I don't know. Like, I'm I'm not grinding those like two percent ROI high roller clubs online too much. It's just like I don't enjoy playing online tournaments too much because it's just you have to force yourself to like be around until six in the, in the morning. Like, mm -hmm. no choice. I prefer cash game over that. Like, my last week was so great. Just like grinding it whenever I felt like I, I put some like twelve to fifteen hour grind days in. But like, I took the afternoon off and and went to do sports and and it's like. Yeah, you don't have the choice when you register for a tournament. Oh, man, um, what, a, what a feeling this is, Stefan. My God, can you imagine? Guys out there, tournament players, imagine a world where it's 5 p.m. and you can just stop playing and, and you go outside. It's a, it's a crazy world, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. I mean, I, I, I put some hours in. Like two days ago, I played until 7 a.m. in the morning. Yesterday, I played until 6 a.m. in the morning. Like It's pretty much the same schedule as tournaments, but uh, I have the choice, and that, that feels great. Yeah, the choice does feel great. You know, I I think I, my limited tournament experience. Every time I play, I I don't understand how people really grind these things every day because, I mean, I guess if you've never played cash game regularly as a profession, you don't understand that the joy of just leaving when you get tired, or if you get you just quitting, or if you're hungry, you go take a break, or something like that. Whereas, 
this is not an option for these multi-day tournaments. You're playing from noon until midnight, 1 a.m., and I guess that's just how things work, and you have to embrace that and get good at that to truly be good at tournaments and be a successful player. It's as well, like, the worst and the best thing in the same time is making a day two. Like, you know, you grind a Sunday, and I, I don't know, like, there is winner mugs or, like, some smaller sites that have a series every now and then, and I, I just hear it from my friends, like, oh, I made day two, and then, well, what does it mean? You won't one table the day two the next day, so you are forced to put in a Monday grind, you know, like, which is uh, EV-wise probably questionable, <laughs> and it's just, like, killing your next day as well. So it's, I don't know. Um, I, I will be in, in for that for, like, eight, nine days for scoop, for sure. It's just, like, it's the one thing you have to be part of. Um, and, yeah, I... I don't know, like, I, I love the, the party stuff that they are doing, but just, like, from the feeling that didn't get me this week with the Power Fest, they, I don't know. What do you think about the current state of the online cash game world on PokerStars, where you've been playing at? Um, well, actually, I mean, I haven't played for a while. Zoom is, is always fine. It's, like, most of the time running. Um, I, I wondered. I, I had a look today at, like, 6 p.m. European time. We had... Uh, seven runners in the pool like on sunday it wasn't running until 5 p.m that's a little sad like i remember like back in the days when i went for for supernova elite which is like not really back in the days it's like three years ago we were grinding soon 500 and soon 1k 24 7 pretty much like with big pools that that was sick but i mean the like the level of play you can make some money there it's okay there there are lots of new really good people as well but it's like still I mean, I have to kind of admit that the star strategy is working, you know, the uh, like more rake is better thing. Like you feel it. It's like they take a shit ton of rake out of you, mm -hmm. but it just stops all the mediocre rake back grinders from playing. So it's like a couple of very good players that just share the really bad players. So it's like it's tough to be winning, but for the good players, it's still like a decent income. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. Just like putting... The hours in a little and now i forgot your question but um <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, the, I mean, the yeah kind of the overall state of cash game either on yeah, um, or anything like that as far as there's like 1k 2k running like pretty much on a daily basis not like 24 7 but it's like not really wreck wars but it's like pretty much the same wrecks over and over again i mean i just played for one week now a lot uh where it feels like it's not really a wreck battle it's more like it looks better to just keep playing three, four handed to have the chance of someone joining. Right. Like a 50 BB stack, just spewing it off uh, instead of just like one seating the table and the other guy being on sit out. It's like, you know, it's just a game going where people have the option to jump in. Right. And uh, I was surprised. I, I don't know what was the sixth session was it Sunday or even Saturday night. It's like I, I played like two, three, four tables of 2K three and four handed with good players and like really like every half an hour or hour we had a like really random guy jumping in so it's like it was fine yeah i mean it's like the the if you build it they will come you know i think i i still yeah. play a lot of shorthanded even on some sites i'm a little more careful about who i'm playing shorthanded with unless i know who those counts are and have a pretty good uh, uh inclination that they're not they're not doing something out of line because on some of the other sites that aren't the major sites you never really know what's happening but yeah, I, I think the value of playing shorthanded, not only you get better shorthanded, and if you're playing against better players, you're going to have to be forced to get better to be able to last in playing those games, but also you give yourself a, a spot, a chance to be able to play with the action players, 50 big blind player, or the random players that sit down, whereas a lot of other regulars aren't going to put themselves in that position. They just have their script, and they're waiting for that fourth seat or fifth seat to get filled up, so then they're going to script the other two seats. Yeah, like, so it's like I, I, I much rather would be one of those four guys battling in there, trying to get better and putting myself. I'm going to play in that table no matter what happens. So, but I, I think a lot of players aren't like that for a number of different reasons. And um, I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like playing 2K. It's like forehanded. It's quite swingy. So I'm I'm in the lucky position that like I'm I'm definitely fine with the variance. Like the like using a couple of stacks doesn't bother me. And that's like when you just, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't have that biggest of all egos. Like it's, it's not like I think I'm the best in the world and I have to battle. I think we have people like that out there too, that just think they, that they are better than everyone else kind of when they aren't like, it's more like, well, I guess those guys were, were 
working harder than me. I see like, I mean, I, I ran the solvers like after every session pretty much looking things up and I figured out, well, like those guys most of the time really know what they are doing and sometimes they know better than me. And so I'm, I'm fine with that, but like I'm, I'm not getting crushed. So it's, it's definitely fine, but it helps at the same time to just say like, okay, you're probably not the spot, but like the slightly minus EV guy in the lineup. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but you can take the variance, and all that is made up for by the rate of like that the by the fish that um, the recreational players that jump in frequently. So that's like all good, you know. Yeah, I think that uh, you know online poker now it's not as talked about as you know kind of things become more segregated, and I feel like people have stopped talking about playing online as much because they play on different sites and they just don't want to really get into it with the app site or. If you're a poker masters regular, you're not really, I don't know, it just seems like it's not as much discussion about the cash game world and kind of what's happening on there. And I think a lot of people are led to believe that it's impossible to be able to win at the cash games these days, but you don't think that's the case, right? Yeah. I mean, there's lots of different stuff. I'm like, I don't know. I never try stuff out. I like to watch people do it first. And then like, if that goes well, I might join. So I never, I never played the, all those Chinese apps, poker clubs, whatever that people talk about. It's I, I know lots of people that do that, but it's like all weird uh, crypto business, like buying in and cashing out. And it's like, well, I don't know what it, what happens if you really want to use that money one day. I mean, it's like I don't know. It's it's for me, it's just like kind of shady stuff. Mm -hmm. It's it's all fine. You make good money there, um, but. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I play I play other sites too, like uh, the occasional ACR high stakes. Like we had some nice uh, NL 10K, 10K games running there. It's just like, you know, they, they are fun. Uh, but yeah, it's like, I don't know, that is running. Now we got GG Poker going. I tried playing that a little. Now I like, I don't know, I stopped it again. Um, don't really have a good read. I mean, I, I swang a little up and down. I got second in a tournament, which built my GG poker bankroll. Then I joined some high stakes. Uh, and it's like, it, it sounds like the biggest fish in the world, like having three setups against you. And then you feel like it's the most rigged side in the world, you know, but I know the rake is super high and it's like, yeah, I don't know whether it's really worth it. And it's the thing like when I'm not sure, I just leave it. So it's like, yeah, I think some people, they don't leave it when they're not sure about a site because nowadays with so many sites and options and clubs and apps popping up that people want to give it a shot, but I think they probably stay too long and, and get into their own head. They're like, oh, this is rigged or they're colluding against me or these sorts of things like that. And once you get into your head and you're not playing your best and then you're mentally kind of fucked when you lose any sort of pot or you think they can see your cards, you're probably yeah. not in a good spot to continue playing on that site or whatever application you're using. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, it's especially true for high stakes. I know some people that could play high stakes, but they play, they'd rather play mid stakes and go for the mass grind because it's just like the, the fear of, of getting like, yeah, facing collusion is just way less. Just imagine you play like high stakes because the games are so soft. And let's even say you play short deck with less cards and you have three people sharing their cards. I mean, you're fucked and you won't even realize. So it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm always a little paranoid when it comes to that. Yeah, I think it's good to be good, be on the lookout for it, but also not let it overwhelm your mindset to the point where you can't even keep your mental control when you're playing a session, you lose and you start getting into your head thinking about something's going after someone's going after you or something's happening. So that was something like, I, I just never, you, I've always heard people talk about this over since I started playing poker where it's rigged or this or that. And I never, ever thought about this ever until the ACR stuff last year. And I was like, wait, maybe there is some stuff happening. And then you're probably like, yeah, there's probably stuff happening on all the sites. There's probably been stuff happening for years, but I was yeah, like, I don't care what's happening. With those, with yeah. those full ring games around one clear spot that is giving money away, you know? Uh, but I would never play that three-handed with like two people of the same small country, let's say. Like, I mean, it's just, wouldn't give me a good feeling. Yeah, I play plenty of three-handed with two people from a small country. <laughs> yeah. Listen, man, I like that. I don't, know. I don't I mean, want to call out random countries, but like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like playing with two people from, I don't know, the United about, States seems dodgy, you know? Oh, yeah. So you mentioned that you don't feel like you're one of the top players right now. I think I'd still, I'd still, we could probably agree, you're still one of the top 
hundred, right? I mean, come on, where where are we gonna where would we say that your your standards right now? If I if we still sell your top hundred, I still consider you one of the top players in the world. I don't I know. Mean, for, for tournaments, I think I'm I'm still uh, pretty highly ranked because this is just like you you need to be good in so many different spots. Um, so so I feel good about that. Um, for let's say I always like to specify things, and then it's like for one hundred like uh, six max no limit hold'em. I'm definitely in the top hundred. I'm I'm very certain about that, and uh, yeah, probably a little higher. But <laughs> it's I mean, fine. I, I kind of I, mean, I think it's good to be kind of that humble approach. I know some poker players have a very non-humble approach. They say everybody fucking sucks. They yeah. they think they deserve to win in every game. They no regulars better than them. You know, that's sort of an older school mentality. I feel like for poker, but. <laughs> I know. I still see a lot of people that have that mentality now. So maybe maybe it isn't an older school mentality. It's, I, I just got this, this screenshots from a buddy yesterday. Oh um, there was an NL10K running, uh, NL10K three-handed, and they were giving shit to each other. Like really like, uh, you suck so much. I fuck your mom. I do this. I do that. Um, and like I beat you and blah, blah, blah. And the other guy is just like the relax, like keep cool. Like I pay you money to play me heads up. It's okay. Blah, blah. If you want to battle. It was just where is it here? Stopping up. You are a guy from Zoom 500. Just random gambler wreck. Lol, lol. I'll pay you English class stuff. Okay. This third guy. You don't know basic poker theory. You know, like guys, people talking, uh, guys talking on 10K to each other. Your game is terrible. It's funny you say that. Never heard anyone rank you top 10. I will literally, <laughs> I will literally, literally pay you to keep playing me three-handed. I don't internet shit talk. You know, like that stuff is happening. Like I try to, to not be part of that. That's, but it's Wait, funny. Is that a transcript from you and Phil Helmuth's conversation and someone else? <laughs> no, that was uh, Stefan11222 and bit too easy. Oh, of course, bit too easy is in the mix. Okay. He, he was relaxed, guys. Stefan was going crazy. Oh man, that's uh, that's pretty funny. I I thought you might be reading a, like a conversation you and Phil Helmy have had at some point in time. Where... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, Phil and, and I, we are on the same side. We're just doing content together. Okay, so from your clip, the last time you were on the podcast, that clip that I posted of you uh, talking about Phil Helmy, I've had more than ten people reference that clip to me when mentioning my podcast. So I'm led to believe certain people only watch clips of my podcast, which I put about fifteen up in my life. <laughs> and second, they really found that clip entertaining, Stefan. So, what's uh, what are your what are your current thoughts, Lion Phil Helmuth? Because last time you were on, you uh, you thought that he might be a little bit weak in a lot of areas related to poker and tournament poker, especially. We didn't play like I, I've never been on his table um, ever since. Like since then, didn't happen. So I, I didn't get to watch anything. So I'm, but I'm I'm looking forward to uh, like very much to to um, rail that uh, Rob Young against Phil Helmuth heads up. This will be some some entertaining stuff. I hope it will be streamed somewhere, or I don't know whether that happened already. I don't know. Like, did you yeah, hear about Rob Young? Those yeah, Rob Young and Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. What'd you say? You, you. I guess you heard about those hundred K sitting goes that they wanted to play. Yeah, I heard about that. I think Poker Go may have been talking about. Uh, I actually don't. Maybe they asked Poker Go. I'm not sure. But yeah, Rob Young versus Phil Hamuth. Free. They're gonna do hundred K sitting goes. Yeah, I mean, heads up sitting goes with like, I don't know, Phil tweeted something about like blind increase every 50 minutes or something like that. I don't know. And uh, yeah, this will be fun to watch. I, I can't tell you anything about his uh, uh, strategy this time. I mean, we, I had a good talk with him in September, I guess. Maybe you missed that. I was I was streaming for, for No Limit Gaming and uh, and we called Phil Helmuth. What? <laughs> he didn't pick up his phone, but he listened to the message we left him, and then he called us back uh, live on stream. What 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 uh, what'd you guys talk about? Um, about the next party we plan um, in uh, in Vegas. He wants to take us to a to club. Like he he was talking a lot about um, how good friends he is with the uh, the owners of the Drays. I guess we want to go there, and how they have uh, how they drink in their. VIP VIP area, like not the VIP area, like the real VIP area. Uh, how they drink like squeshly, uh, freshly squeezed watermelon juice with vodka, and we we're going to do that. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. So we had a we had a like awesome five minute talk there. It was during Poker Masters, and um, he gave us the explanation why he I guess he played like the first one or two events. Um, we got a bad beat story from the PLO event. He got it in good and got sucked out on. That was that was tough. 
and um, yeah, then then he decided to not play it anymore because he's only playing for the overall win. And with the point system, it was like not possible really anymore after the first three events because he didn't want to play short deck, I guess. Uh, he just wanted to crush the no limit events, but he was just there for the for the overall title. That was that was some great stuff. So. Have you got a chance to go to the club with him and and, and try out this oh, fresh sweet WSOP uh, like in two months? So you'll be going to Dre's. You'll be in the VIP VIP area. You'll have yeah. some freshly squeezed watermelon juice, courtesy of Phil Hamuth. Good and vodka. Don't forget that the best vodka, not the cheap one. The, because what? it's like it was so hilarious. But um, yeah. Nobody talks like Phil Hellmuth, man. He's got a very interesting... Maybe they do, and I don't like... Maybe I just don't know them. You know, like, I know a couple... I know a lot of guys like you, and me and you aren't talking about things like that, but maybe we need to go hang out with a different crowd to really get true exposure to... Maybe Phil, his, his group of friends, they all they all sort of act like that. I don't know. I, think, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's like, I'm really looking forward to it, and that is not making things up. That's like, this is going to happen. Like, um, it's like, we even had, like... We, we talked about how many people to bring. Like he wants to get to have a good crew, but not like too many, but like the right people. Sure. So, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, we still. Um, and his first pick actually was a, a kind of a fun fun one. He wants to have uh, Dietrich Fast in the in the crew. Dietrich Fast would not be the thing I person I would think about for number one on the list, but <laughs> I think Dietrich is pretty fun. So I mean, I don't know. That yeah, be... I, I like, that would be great. Like I mean, yeah, I, I think, think we have good option. Fun. Trouble now because back then we still thought that um, Super Hero Bowl takes place in May always. So we wanted to do it after, like the night after, after we chopped the heads up or something. And now we need to reschedule, I guess, around WSOP Main. But let's see. Yeah. What do you think about the Super High Roller Bowl being changed from May until December that the Poker Go puts on? Um, well, I have two different thoughts on that. Uh, first of all, I think it makes sense. Like if they want to establish their whole. Um, like overall leaderboard, uh, player of the year, whatever series, um, which like, yeah, I'm not too interested in because like I won't grind the whole year in Vegas. It's more like for the locals. Uh, so I think it makes sense. It's cool. Um, it makes sense for like, I mean, it's always about getting the recreationals to play there and find a good timing for them. I think around Christmas is cool. Um, and the second thought is like last year, how they handle it was like the biggest shit show I've ever experienced. Like, mm. like not like no info given out at all. Like it was again, the deposit thing. So you put it out like first minute, which is like, I mean, I'm not in Vegas. It's like still a little tough. I don't store all my money there, like get sort things out. Um, then there's announced for a poker go a lottery for like a certain date. We had the date, I think it was like November, 27th or something like that and then like still on the same day there was no date uh no like no timing and i was like i want to watch that you know like i mean am i it's like this is my decision if i get picked i will fly and book a flight and book a hotel over from europe around christmas time where like the, the top flights were fully booked already it was like ridiculous and then um yeah i tried to watch that and i asked I guess Paul Campbell on Twitter, even like, when will that take place? And I, I just got it like, oh, it will be postponed by one week. I'm like what? Like, so you do the lottery like one week before, which is like, well, that clearly shows me they are just doing stuff for the people around Vegas. It's not like you can't tell everyone. I mean, you can, but like, I kind of care about planning and like booking stuff and like not getting the worst flight in the world um, because everything is sold out. And then, yeah, uh, the real reason obviously was that it didn't fill up. Like, even that did not get mentioned. If I put down 30k there as like a registered player, like with a with a deposit, I cannot get back. Uh, I think I kind of have the right to get the information, like about the current state of the tournament. Whether it's like, oh, it's not filling up, he can tell me. Like the moment the lottery did not take place at that date. He can tell me it's just 32 players so far. You can book your flights. You will be in for sure. You know, like nothing happens. Lottery is postponed by one week, like whatever. Um, and then the next week, like we figured out, well, there is no lottery because it still didn't fill up. And uh, yeah, that was just like yeah, kind of, I mean, I, I like staying in, in Europe around Christmas time as well, not flying to Vegas to play a 
tournament where I don't know whether it will take place or not, or I was just felt like, well, they are not really interested in like me being happy about that whole topic. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, uh, I'm surprised to hear that because especially uh, you've played the other series that, that they have. You've won one of the series. What was it, the the Masters or the Open? What, which Masters, yeah. Masters, okay. So the Masters, you won the Poker Masters there. I would, I would just think that they might, uh, you know, kind of be a little more accommodating with somebody like yourself who's been supportive of the events and had a lot of success in those events and is very anxious and happy and excited to play in something like Super High Roller Bowl. So it, it did kind of seem like that whole process could have been better. I expect it to be better this year because last year it did seem like they kind of maybe debated it and then last minute threw it together, threw it in the schedule, and they didn't want to have to do it this year. And they said, okay, we'll take the hit on how many players are registered. But yeah, it's unfortunate that uh, a lot of the top other players didn't get to come out here. You know, I was definitely surprised not to see you in the mix for that. Yeah, I mean, um, we had that actually three times last year, um, or even four times with like all the tournaments where you had to put a deposit down. Like they make, they tell you big stories of like how many businessmen will be playing that everyone thinks like, okay, I have to get in there first minute because there will be a run on those seats. Um, so we had the first spiral ball where I didn't get picked in the lottery. And then I had like lots of back and forth. Will I get picked as like the current poker masters champion? and uh, or not like one of those vip seats and was like first no then i heard like rumors that it's already clear that i get a seat because robo won't play but then like two weeks later it, it took them two weeks to really tell me like they were telling me the night before pretty much that i'm playing or four days before so like i had to rely on those rumors to fly over and like i don't know what happens with my 30k deposit like will they really enforce it it if I wasn't around, like I don't know. Then we had the the million one drop where you had to pay like a fifty k deposit, where it was I guess possible for even some players with connections to get the money back and not play. Mm. Um, mm. Like what happened to the money? I think there were people putting out deposits and they weren't playing. And what happened to those? Was this money donated in the end? It was definitely not in the prize pool. Like, like I want to, I want to know stuff like that. You know, good question. So like, that was the next one where it just was not necessary to deposit. Then we had the party two hundred fifty k, where there was a. I got a list of people that put down the deposit. We had, I guess, three or four of them not playing. Unfortunately, two of them like busy, very busy businessmen. Like, if if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and like that was that was kind of a shit show too. And um, yeah, then we had the Super Bowl. I see, I see why you're not traveling as much, Stefan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I told myself like it, that's not that's really like this is annoying. So I won't put down any deficit. Like if it won't fill up, I will be there the day. Like if the tournament is fine, sure. It's just like it was. If the the people that make the tournament just do that to be like to be safe on their side because they have a certain amount of players, well, that's good for them obviously, and it's totally their right, but. I kind of expect like just just the information policy pretty much. I, I expect that if I put down 30k there, um, you know, it's like I was yeah, kind of we're, we're talking we're talking two hundred and fifty thousand dollar buy-ins here, three hundred thousand dollar buy-ins, the the premier high roller tournaments that we can find in poker. So you you'd expect uh, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm really surprised to hear that because it's obviously not something that's mentioned or discussed often because the player pool is so small. And a lot of those a lot of the guys that are playing in these tournaments aren't necessarily the most vocal about these things like that or they're not going to make a youtube video like doug polk might make a youtube video about like if doug polk had the same thing happen with the super high roller ball he had made a me to made a youtube video about it yeah, with I mean, thousand views it's different for so many and like that's the people they are in touch with the most that it's just like the biggest kind of locals they will be there anyways and they do it like they change things like two hours before and they they it feels like they're all in a whatsapp group you know like and they are you know like probably like, yeah they and, might be uh, well, then you have those guys that just like travel for the sake of the game. They love it. You know, like those Adrian Matias guys, they, they will be there anyways, whether there is a 300K, that he will be there for WPT five diamonds in Bilaccio anyways. Like, and uh, well, then they are just like a very, very few players that just pick their spots and like are not interested in playing everything. And I'm one of those. And for me, it was just, was just bad. If it's, if, 
if they want to have it that way and I then it's it's fine I won't come but uh yeah it's like I, I expected something else who do you think are some of those other people you mentioned that kind of are the the guys that'll show up for anything I think one name that comes to mind that I hear a lot about is uh David Peters I feel like he's one I always hear he kind of just shows up yeah, plays, so far the play. GTI players like I guess um Foxen Foxen uh Reiner Kempe will be there for sure um I mean, until last year, I would have said Dom will be everywhere anyways. You know, like, it was like, who else? There, there are way more. Like, uh, I don't know. Maybe Dom right now. Dom, Dom just got in the chat right now. Maybe Dom has uh, shout out to Dominic. Dominic Nietzsche, by the way, in the chat out there. Mo Money says, even, if, even as a German saying this, please teach him how to pronounce deposit, Joey. Well, technically, we say deposit, but I kind of like deposit, so I'm gonna go with deposit for now on. That's fine. <laughs> I like the I like deposit. I don't. I've I haven't heard it pronounced that way, but I certainly not gonna argue yeah. the pronunciation here. I'm fine with people telling me the right way. You know, like it's just. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know better. You don't well, know. Better. Uh, we we go with a uh, deposit for today, and uh, tomorrow we'll start deposit. Okay. Deposit. I like <laughs> that. <Learn stuff>. <laughs> Alex uh, Nur. Fuck, man. I don't know how to say these names. Alex Nurasevichevich. Nura Naru Savicious says, name top five online tournament players. I love these power rankings, Stefan. What are you thinking for these rankings right now? Yeah, I mean, I, I can only guess, you know. Um, I, I told you before, I guess we had the last podcast as well, that it's just I like to specify things. There are different players that are the best in the Sunday Million than there are players that are the best in the... 1K, high roller club, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I guess if you go with overall players, there's just a couple that grind everything. And for me, you need to be very good in the game, first of all. Mm -hmm. Then you need to be very good when it comes to knowing your opponents. And then you need to be very good like in having certain strategies against those guys where it's like, okay, you need to work hard. You need to have people around you that you can talk to and like gather information because then you have just like double or triple or 20 times the reads than anyone else. And then, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. So there's just like pretty much two groups that fit into that. And that's one time the Swedes that like play everything. Um, like who is it? Lena 900. Um, C. Darwin. Video, who's the third guy? Uh, C. Darwin. Darwin. Well, I guess. If, yeah, like, Poker, technically wise, I would rank me higher than those, but they have a higher ROI in any tournament they play than me, 100%. Um, online. <laughs> and uh, then you have the Bit B crew, like Pats, Elmerick, Sam Bauston. So I, I rank those six players top six. Or like their crews, whoever belongs to that. That's yeah, so you, it sounds like you think having a crew is a really important thing. Yeah, definitely. Just like doing it on your own. I mean, like tw you can have five times the information. So and I'm not probably that stuff is happening. And I'm but I'm not even talking about sharing hands something. No, like it's it's the thing. Like hey, we play this guy over and over again. What do you guys have on him? You know, like then you have like then you get to know like some like classic tendencies, and he does not even know that you know about them. That's like I mean, definitely part of the very successful German crew around 2016, 17, like when the Americans were not that teamed up yet. I mean, they teamed up a lot now and they, they got really, really, really strong and they are working hard talking about the super high rollers, high rollers now. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like, well, you just ask, like you have your WhatsApp group chat and I guess there's nothing wrong with it. Like, what do you think? Like sizing wise here, does that tell us anything? This player, you get five answers, you know, of players that played a lot with, a certain guy that's definitely helpful yeah it's a good point about the americans not being as uh clicked up you know i think it, there was but they were very disconnected it seemed like whereas the germans was a, a powerful unit there's this video going about these ducks in germany where the ducks crossed mm -hmm. the street when the you see this video where the, there's a stair to stop walk it's five or six german ducks they're waiting at a stop walk the light has uh, the hand signal there it says don't walk and then it goes to green and then they all walk the street on an actual street, it's like the Germans are just in tune, no matter if they're ducks or poker players or anything like. Just reminded me of Fedor. I thought Fedor was out there leading that that pack of ducks out there. They primed <laughs> their mind and they got ready to go there. So, 
But uh, that's interesting to hear that the Americans are getting into uh, their own groups too. Who are kind of some of these groups? Uh, is it like a? I think it's now more of one really, really big, big group. Like, I mean, I I'm not in their WhatsApp groups, but I've seen like them posting stuff back and forth. I don't know who's like, I mean, who's really in there, but definitely there's a uh, chat going on because between all the uh, Dan Smiths and Jason Coons and Ike Haxtons and uh, Stevie is American for me too. Um, and uh, who else? Like all, all those players, I guess like David Peters is a little not in that group, but like who's Seth Davies obviously in there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how much Ben is still is still playing. Ben 86, those, those uh, tournaments too regularly, but like all, just all of them. And then they like, when it comes, I, I, I don't know, like they even team up and are friends with all the Canadians as well. Like when they are at EPTs, um, like Timothy Adams, the Greenwoods, uh, uh, Oxoda, and like, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, yeah, it's a strong group. Yeah, they're uh, they're they're coming they're coming for the Germans, man. They don't want the Germans at the top well. right anymore in the poker world. Where are the Germans at right now, man? Where where are you guys? What's 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 the status of the German crew in, in terms of the the tournament world? Um, yeah, good question. Actually, it's it's like it's like the the crew that existed is like grew grew a little, uh, got a little older, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like not that one crew that is just forfeiting everything to just play poker and crush it, like. I haven't seen Fedor for ages now. I, I mean, I'm in Vienna here. He is too. We are sometimes on WhatsApp, but like we, we haven't met like two years ago. I've been at his place at least once a week, like just chilling. And um, like he's kind of out for business. Like he does so many, many things. Mm -hmm. and we have uh, Reiner now like grinding the US every day every like every got a, month got a girl got a girl got a girlfriend now got a girl, yeah um <laughs> yeah uh christian christner the the most favorite one like he he's the best i mean he is he is uh he's uh, studying again in in uh, germany he's like all that uh, in in austria here in vienna uh, he's studying psychology he's like yeah poker that was that was cool um but like i don't feel like that traveling it's like i don't enjoy it too much maybe a little online that's fine uh, Stefan Schilhabel like didn't want to play poker anymore. He now founded NLG, mm -hmm. Limit Gaming. We do like some streaming. He's he's like uh, organizing all the esports part of that No Limit Gaming. Um, Dominic Nietzsche not even traveling to any place uh, to every place. He's just um, he's now uh, in the in the business world as well. He's like uh, you gotta gotta be prepared. Big app coming up, poker related. I, I, know about, I know about the app coming up. I've, uh... solver, solver related. I guess there's uh, the the I I will get the first beta beta gamma test version uh, next week, and I'm thrilled about it. I got the first, like the the I don't know Omega version, if that is a word. Like to pl I got to play it last week when I when I met like, his business partner and Marcus um, at a breakfast place in Vienna last, and it was it was awesome. Like I'm I'm so much looking forward to to. Uh, I guess it will be really successful and interesting for like every grinder out there. Uh, but I, I don't want to give away too much. It's like uh, I think that's a great description right there. Stay tuned for this one. It's like it's like the solver just in the fun version, like the very fun version. Yeah, I'm sure uh, me and Dom will do a podcast, and I, <clears throat> I'll do something uh, related to this, and maybe maybe there might be some affiliate. Pora, I guess Cora is still on the travel grind. He was just I've seen. I didn't even know about it, and then I read it on Poker News. Who? Uh, who, that's who, who he, Cora Aldemir. Oh, okay, okay. He was in um, in Tallinn for this uh, Patrick Antonio's poker stars Patrick Antonio's Patrick Antonio's thing, um, <laughs> which Patrick Antonio's took down at least one of the tournaments. He, he was like, poker. he was like yeah he was like uh, third in the twenty five k and was like playing some one hundred two hundred cash game on stream. It was fun and actually I messed up the timing because he woke me up today. I grind until six a.m. Um, I was still sleeping and he called me at like one thirty. To wait and i was like i had my phone pretty much next to my ear and it was like super loud i don't know i never get phone calls there like never ever people write me on skype or anything uh my, my girlfriend is calling there but it's like she knows when i'm sleeping and like no way she was calling that time and i was like cora yeah hey we are meeting for it's champions league you have a champions league tonight which i messed up usually i watch that right now gotta gotta check the results in a second and um and he just invited for like watching at his place and then having like a nice uh or like a game night whatever like playing all kinds of card games board games whatever i might join them in a 
after we finished here. Let's see. That sounds like fun. There's a couple of interesting games still going on right now that maybe any uh, football fan would enjoy. Juventus is playing Ajax in Barcelona, it looks like. So those seem like games that uh, <laughs> most football fans would like to watch, I think. Yeah, I mean, I watched the other matches yesterday. I watched the uh, Liverpool and the Man City Tottenham. Like we had the dual dual screen set up um, for both games. That was good. You gotta have it, man. I still don't understand Champions League too much. I tr I'm like, I don't understand. Like, as a system like that, wouldn't really. I don't think it would work in America where you have like your main league and then all of a sudden you just compete against because in here there really isn't more than one main league. So I couldn't imagine the NBA having like this in-season tournament. I just don't think that the teams would care enough about it. They'd want to save it for their actual season, where in this it seems like there's a lot of priority and a lot of importance placed on Champions League and, and sometimes even more priority and importance placed on Champions League versus the Spanish League or versus the Premier League. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. It's like it's the like every country has its – national league and then like the best of it more or less qualify for the champions league and that's like uh, that's played in between so it's pretty much champions league winner is uh like the best club in europe and obviously for those it's everyone says it's kind of priority to win your national championship but for most of the teams that's like pretty easy you know like in germany it's i guess probably bayern this year the eighth time in a row right and in in, in in france it's yes. Paris every year Mm -hmm. England is the only one that has like four or five teams that are really competitive and Spain has like two maybe if you include Atletico then they have three but that, that's about it and like then quarterfinal Champions League is like the these are the matches to watch it's just like I mean the top eight in Europe left that's 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 pretty sick I mean those matches is just it's just gold like the even the the playoff playoff round before best like round of 16 was just like Ajax killing Real Madrid was just insane, you know, like watching yeah, that and Liverpool, it's, Munich. It was cool. It's gotta be it's gotta be really cool to see these top teams, these like legendary teams, Barcelona and Real Madrid compete against other, you know, the other country, the PSG. It's just like it's just kind of cool to see these kind of these teams dominate their own uh, their own leagues and then all of a sudden they have to play each other and you get that. I mean, it's like it's pretty much a little like playoffs in, in the US, you know. Like I guess not everyone is watching all the games in like the preseason but then playoff time you know that's when things are crazy it's just like that like this kind of of uh thing is like played like the whole year a little yeah. not just like those three intense weeks and then it's over yeah, i don't know if we have any uh, soccer fans out there i might think most people out there are americans uh yeah. just said uh, you gotta teach them you know yeah I, mean, I, I started watching your football stuff so at least you know you got to listen to five minutes of soccer talk Oh yeah, I kind of, I mean, I, I just enjoy, I watch a little bit of soccer and I just enjoy the uh, the glam of it and kind of how things work, the competition aspect of things. The, I like it when the super teams get to show down with each other and you get to watch the best of the best battle it out, whether it's poker, or whether it's football or basketball or anything like that. I, th I find that pretty fun. Even even uh, esports or marbles or I've been watching a lot of arm wrestling on YouTube lately. And, <laughs> arm wrestling? Uh, yeah, there's like this, there's this sick guy, Devin Larratt from Canada. He's just, this dude's fucking forearm. This guy's a, a goddamn madman, dude. A madman. <laughs> 6'4", 265, the sickest forearm muscles I've ever seen. And they had a super showdown against one of these guys from Russia, Dennis Lebanon. I can't remember his last name, what, how you spell it, how you say it. But it, I just like, I, the present, I'm telling you, Stefan, the presentation value for these things is, is fucking sick. Because they have a crowd, everyone's like cheering massively. They have these intro packages they do. They have the announcements. Everyone's got a nickname. It's pretty crazy, man. It's it's, it's actually pretty fun to watch. I mean, I, I, I can really imagine. Like, this is for so many of those, like, kind of sports. Like, it's not really, like, accepted as, like, real sports, I guess. Yeah. But, it's I, I mean, I watch it every year, a little, that darts event around Christmas. You know, that, know about that? Like, mm. big thing, just, like filled with people getting super wasted and cheering for players like whatever they do it's gonna be awesome you know? right exactly like i think darts is a very similar kind of little subject yeah. too yeah it's i've been i've been, i don't know I, I study arm wrestling now i like kind of know how to not get my arm broken if i do arm wrestle you keep your keep your body in close to your arm right here and you want to always keep your head straight you don't want to be looking here you want to be looking where the <laughs> it's just i don't know man it's kind of uh it's considered a mini martial art arm wrestling is interesting dennis sipe 
Cyplik and Nakov. I don't know how to say that dude's fucking massive, this Russian guy. So that's like a super match that happened in November. If any of you guys are uh, interested in arm wrestling. Yeah, he's the Phil Ivy of arm wrestling. That is correct. So what's uh, Chris, Sasha said, what does he think of Jordan Christos now? I don't know what this is referring to. So what is that question in reference to? I have no real idea. I mean, I know the name. And I guess I played him once two years ago and like, or three years ago in one of my first WSOP events, actually. And I think he's referring to the two minute tank for every preflop decision. Maybe like, something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what. Uh, yeah, it's like he's like tanking for two minutes and then five Xing the cutoff, like playing some weird, annoying style. And like, just like, and I mean, I guess I'm a little known out there for uh, that I like shot clocks and I hate people that tank, but I don't know this guy. Like, I, I played him once and I guess didn't he just win like a USBO event where there was a shot clock? Yeah, he won. There, I think but, like, yeah, I just tell everyone like like speed up and it's fine, you know. That's that's all I know. Uh, Sasha said Jordan Christo said he's the greatest in the world and they had a bit of beef with Dom and Manic. Manic. Okay, I didn't hear about that. You haven't heard about that either as well. What do you think about determined players who do that? Because I've uh, I I feel like it's part of their strat where they are doing that purposely to try to tilt other players at the table. I mean, we had the or I had the issues last November with Martin Cabrillo again, the uh, all fan favorite uh, Czech guy mm -hmm. who's just like trying to annoy you as much as possible. It's like for me, this is not part of the game. Yeah, and I think like okay, in that cases, even on a stream table, headphones for like uh, like uh, ear safety should be should be allowed. Like they they took the headphones away from me that he could um, that he could still continue like annoying me. That was that was really sick. Um, yeah, I think it's just bullshit and shows like kind of very bad character. But if this is your way of maximizing EV. Yeah, like um, I think you have kind of a sad life, but it's just my opinion, you know. It's like it's okay, like if it's not too many people doing it. I mean, if too many people doing it, like the game is dying. Because that, that, that's an important thing, right there. You said because okay, well, if we if we have one or two guys doing that, what happens if six guys are doing that now? And you have six people tanking, you have six people kind of doing these uh, things to try to get under your skin. Then do the rules start to maybe change, or is a discussion to be had? And right now it's fine because it's only a few people doing it. So I think it's important to kind of have the discussion now before it gets out of hand. As soon as the people that the game is running ar uh, around start complaining, you know, then then there will be something done. If I complain about something, no one really cares because I will be back anyways because I play to make money too. If it's like three of the recreationals complaining like this is killing the fun for me no way i come back to your venue here that this is how you how you like how tournaments are uh, are run at your place well then everything will be done for like stopping that shit so i mean this is why we have the private games in uh, for cash games right now is because of this activity this getting under people's skin or tanking or slow playing playing slow or super knitting it up you know super knitting it up i wouldn't necessarily put in the same category as those other things but that's what we've seen in the in these events and i don't think that'll ever happen with tournaments i don't think it'll ever go like these private events but you never know it could it could end up happening that way and then at that point in time if you're one of those players you know i guess the but then again there'll always be enough tournaments it seems like it's only getting bigger and bigger more events more events higher buy-ins re-entries so yeah it's just i mean yeah like regarding that, it's it's the poker world is really crazy. Like when you look at the live schedule nowadays, it's like, yeah, that's that's where I started as well. Like that I chose to just pick more because there is just like, if you really go for the grind, I mean, you don't have a single week off in the year. I would I would assume it's just just insane how much is out there. How how does um how much are our travel expenses for when you're when you're going around and you're traveling all these different places because you got to buy the flight there you got to get the flight out of there you're paying for hotel rooms and you're probably booking them last minute i'm assuming like what are, what are the expenses cost if you're going to go on a month or two grind of the different stops for tournaments good question i've never tracked it i'm like i think i'm one of the guys that is still planning ahead the most like for example i got my biggest flights for july already wow and i got my hotel for july already so uh, uh this is uh, probably not not common out there 
Um, so it's, I guess it's okay. Um, and like when it comes to like, for example, Triton events, the, the hotel is included when you play the main event, like stuff like that um, decreases travel expenses. But it's still like, I don't know. I always thought like after taking like the, I don't know, X flight a year, I thought like maybe next year I should track it. Is it like 40 flights? If it, is it 50 flights? It's like, I mean, like even every, every single flight, and most of them are kind of last minute. Because I mean, as I said before, with the super rollable things, you don't even know when the when the tournament will pl take place. Exactly. Well, like, for example, I, I had the spot now um, uh, with my girlfriend. She wanted to come to Montenegro too with me, and um, and yeah, she was like, "Yeah, I need to I need to book holidays at work. You know, like can you, I want to go again? Can you tell me?" Like, and that was in January. Like, yeah, and I was just like, "Yeah, probably there's going Montenegro going to be again." You know. And then there was Jeju was in March, the next Triton event. And it was still like, yeah, um, hmm, Montenegro, we are not sure. I got the information like there won't be Montenegro this year. One week later, I got the information like that's still unconfirmed, but it probably starts May the 4th. And then it's like they have all those short deck events that I won't play. Uh, it's And then I got the information it's 4th to 17th, but we don't have the final schedule yet. So I need to know, like, well, will I be there the first week or the second week, or will they spread all the events that I have to stay the full two weeks? And like, yeah, actually, a lot, last week we booked everything, and it's like, I mean, the poker world is just like not really part of the real world, and <laughs> I have that connection with my girlfriend now that it's like my life is con very much connected to the real world, you know, and you need to book holidays and you need to plan ahead and you want to book flights and stuff like that. It's like. Uh, it's tough sometimes, and you're forced to the last minute stuff. Yeah, it doesn't sound very, uh, very convenient of a thing. These uh... it's convenient for everyone that doesn't have a job and doesn't have the money, which is which is true for like most of the team, people that are playing Triton events. So it's totally fine. But um, yeah, like, for example, the WSOP they announce stuff early because it's like regular people going there. You have the schedule. When did it come out? Like mid of December? They like put, the... they put some events, the major events out in December. Yeah. They've slowly kind of put some more out. And then I think the whole thing. End of over. January, we had all of it pretty much. Right. Yeah. They yeah. are very smart about that. Obviously, as you mentioned, a lot of people travel from all over the world. They book the hotel rooms months and months in advance. We saw the one guy, Jeremy, his wife bought him a ticket and a hotel room for a May event in December. So if you talk with people around the series, they're going to tell you, I've been planning this for months. And this has been on my schedule. I'm here for this weekend. So yeah, World Series Poker does do that very, very well in getting that schedule out there ahead of time. And it's, uh, I mean, listen, World Series Poker is one of the most impressive things it's sick. In, in, in the world. When you think about it, six months, six weeks of the year, the entire poker community, for the most part, gathers in one place. And the city is taken over by poker and all the casinos. There's series everywhere now, cash game everywhere. The whole it's crazy that something like that exists. Six weeks it's exists. I don't know of anything else like that in any other part of like sports or esports or anything like that where there's some sort of gathering where the entire community comes together in Vegas. And it's just the, the location here. It's it's crazy, man. It's really crazy to think about. And I mean, it's it's like it's definitely like a very 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 cool experience. Like if yeah, if you're not in the grind, I, I really enjoy it too. Just like walking around. And knowing so many faces, you know, that's that's really fun. The first time I walked there, uh, I went to Vegas was in 2015. And I've never seen like all those people. I've like those those kind of stars that I watched on YouTube, like seeing, oh, there's Daniel Negriano. Really like I, I remember like the first time um, I, I was staying in Aria. I played two five cash game there. Get a couple of Coronas in to to uh, increase rake back. And then uh I went to that uh, 550s, it's called, I guess, that pizza place next to it. Mm -hmm. Just had that last night. And I was I was there. <laughs> I was there with like one or two other friends. And I was like, I will, who's, is it really like the guy like on the next table? Is it is it really Isaac Haxton? Like I was like, well, I was I was like, how do you say like stars struck something like that? I was like, what the fuck? And he was like, he did confirm. It's really him. He, it was still like the. The 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 long hair Ike the the PCA uh, windy thing Ike that was wow that was like that was insane and I'm like looking up there where they play high stakes like 
that then Ivy's room, like, is that Andrew Robel sitting there with 300? Like, how much is that? That's insane. What are those, like, those yellow chips and those blue, white, like, the, the flags and stuff? You know, it's, it's I mean, first time experience is just, you'll never forget it, I guess. That is similar to my first experience in Aria Poker Room back in the day, maybe, I don't even know, like, years ago at this point in time. But yeah, sitting there, like you watch people walk by, you're like, oh my God, is that Negranu? Like, is that, oh shit, who's that? You know what I mean? Like, it's it's one of the coolest things when you're kind of, it's your first experience and you watch, because I watch so much. I've, I've tell people, I think I've watched almost every poker clip before 2011 on YouTube. Every one of them I've watched yeah. for hours. The show, every show, cash game, tournament, I watched everything. I was a huge, 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 massive poker fan, which is why I have so much poker knowledge in my mind about history and about things. I've always just been into all of it. So it's, uh, yeah, man, I was, I was the same way for a long time. And, you know, even now when I see people, I, you know, I, I, now when you get to know when you're friends with them, I'm sure you experience this too. When you have a relationship with them, it's a lot different, but it's still pretty cool to like, think about, Hey, you know, this is, uh, you know, one of the best poker players in the entire world in a game that everyone around the world tries to compete at and get better at. And you're what I like most everything. about it actually is that how easy it is to be kind of, to be kind of part of the whole thing. Like I remember the first time Bellagio poker room as well, seeing there. Oh fuck, Bobby's room. Mm -hmm. There's like the floor standing in front of the room, like like kind of like a security guy. You know, like can I have like a short look like that? You know, is it okay? I'm yeah. not sure. I have no clue. I had I had friends asking me like oh i'm in vegas as well or like in melbourne when we played awesome Millions there and like is it possible to like have a look what you guys are doing and i'm like yeah sure you can walk in there just like stand right next to me like really do you need do i need like a ticket or something <laughs> it's like it's so out of this world and then the next year oh well, yeah I, I got staked by some people and they were just playing mix in bobby's room and it's the most casual thing to walk in receive your 25k and walk out like and that's like in a one year, it's like how how much it's like I don't know. It's sick sick world, but it's like you gotta like it some somehow. <laughs> Even now, I'm I'm like hesitant to walk into Bobby's room now. I feel uncomfortable walking in there. Even if I'm like I even if my good friends could be playing in there, I'd still be like, eh, you know, I'll just stay out here. You know, like I don't need to go in the yeah. goddamn. And you need, you need, it's like I, I I feel like it's way easier when you have kind of reason, even when it's just made up. You know, like you have Scott Sieber always sitting in there, and I mean he's a fun dude. You can just always shoot a shit at his head. You know, like it's fine. Just give him like, and you walk in there and say like, "Hey, Scott, what's up? Something stupid?" You know, and mm -hmm. uh, he will he will answer you with something fun, and then it's like you know you're a part of it. That's it's all easy. I mean you can walk in there anyways anytime. And they will welcome you. I agree, man. That's this. That's a lot. Of, that's a, it's a unique thing for Poker World. That I mean, maybe it exists in the real estate world or the lawyer world. They have their own lawyer Bobby's room version of things. I, I don't. I don't really know how. Oh, it works. I don't know. Yeah, in poker, man, it's certainly. Yeah, man, Bobby's room. You played in Bobby's room before? You ever played a, a session cash I've game? I've never played a session there. No. Wow. Is that is that something you want to do someday? No, no, I don't care. I don't know. I, I've only played in there one time and um was I let me think how many bank let me think how many buy-ins I had for the game I was playing. I bought in for thirty thousand. I probably had <laughs> okay, I was under rolled slightly for that game. I think I had about twenty or thirty buy-ins for that game at the time. So I shouldn't have been uh I shouldn't have been playing in that game, but I just wanted to I just wanted the story. That was it. I don't even, I didn't the lineup probably wasn't very good. I saw Johnny Chan in the game. I'm like, listen, man. This will never happen again, <laughs> and it never has happened again. Oh, no, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember like the only really high stakes game I played in Vegas was that um, like five hundred one k cash game, and there was like a Chinese businessman who told us like I will come at three, then it was at four, and he was like texting with Ike and Robo or something like that, and I was five, and it's like yeah, he he will he will come up in like a second, so maybe we should just get the cards in the air, and it doesn't look like we are just waiting for him. Even so, it's like, even though it's just obvious that we are waiting for him, but it's like you know, like it's fine. We can play a little, and uh, I was like, wow, we are, we are playing a series game here, like 100k in front of you, 501k with True Teller, Ike Haxton, Andrew Robel, and Fedor Holtz, and myself, <laughs> and like. Sounds like a, the perfect game to be in. And where where were we playing? Um, Aria high stakes area next to the two five and the five ten game. Like that is, that was cool. Like no way we got Ivy's room for like some shit show like that. No way. <laughs>
I love it, man. Yeah, during the summertime, man, there is some crazy cash game that get broken out there. There's VIPs coming to town, and you see all the names that you recognize. Like you mentioned, you see a true teller, Hollywood Haxton. They're kind of ha- they're regulars, staples of the uh, high stakes world during cash game season here in Vegas. So it's, uh, I mean, it's if you're a poker fan, man, what's I, I feel like that's such a motivating thing and an insp- inspiring thing for a lot of poker players out there to be playing a two five and then see these high stakes games and then be like, man, one day I want to work hard or I want to make money or I want to get staked or sell action, whatever. But that used to always be such a big motivator for me is wanting to play in those games. And then I'm sure a lot of people out there feel the same way too. Yeah. I think that's a great thing. Like just having them next to each other. I mean, it's like we had in Bellagio maybe where they like have the same dealers for the hundred K tournament like for the one, two cash game, that's not the best thing in the, in the world, which is like having things close together, I think is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. I've noticed uh poker after dark yesterday. They had three, uh, uh, actually I don't want mm, two really good dealers. One dealer, you know, I don't know. could have been a little better. I think in some spots, but I was like, yeah, I bet they like, this is the, the, the VIP dealers, the best of the best guy get to deal this game because there's no way they're going to let the people who kind of, you know, the, the people aren't very good at dealing. I feel like those guys get their chops in the one, two game, like you mentioned, and then yeah. gradually start to go to high stakes. And when, once they get a little more experience or get, get more skilled. I so mean, yeah, everyone has to start, but it's like, and then like the floor to, or like Jason Kuhn or someone was, was, was complaining because like there was someone who never has, has seen a shot clock before, you know, and then, like, it's, it's, it's a serious issue in a hundred K, you know, you should, it's like, yeah, four. How can you? How can you? Uh, like, that, like nothing against the dealer. It's just like the wrong game for him. He was not doing anything yeah, wrong. Yeah, you know, like, get no plans. Dislike the and dealer. Know, in, here in Bellagio, every dealer is dealing everything. Blah blah blah. It's like fuck it. You know. Yeah, that doesn't seem very uh, very GTO. I don't know if they do that at most places. So that's uh. Let me get oh, yeah, that. fine usually. Like, I, I wonder if someone was a little weaker in the Poker Go studio, but. Yeah, I uh, I got a couple of shout outs. I see a couple of my people from my Instagram on there, Poppy GTO, Kevin Glenn, K Glenn always sends me a lot of messages on uh, IG and uh, they're actually entertaining to read. So shout out to K Glenn out there. Uh, I saw Adrian, Adriano, what did Adriano say? He said, I'm going to World Series Poker for the first time this year. It's going to be awesome. Hope to see you guys there to ask for a picture. First of all, Adriano, if you see me, you must ask me for a photo. I don't give a fuck what I'm doing. Tell me that you're Adriano. Tell me I told you to ask me that. If you see stuff in, you better fucking do the same thing. Whoever he's with, run up to him and be like, I saw you on the podcast. I need a photo with you, brother. I and by the way, I wish you a lot of luck. The World Series of Poker for the first time is an amazing experience. It's awesome out here. If you have any questions, get in touch with me. I'll uh, on Instagram, I'll try to answer you back. But I get a lot of messages. But if you have any questions about that or Vegas, anyone out there, feel free to hit me up. And I'll I'm gonna do a video actually, Stefan, for World Series of Poker. Uh, first or second timers and how to maximize your experience, where to stay, where to go to, where to play, how to think about things and stuff like that. Because did, when you came for the first time, like what was your, I was like, I, I was really glad I had, um, um, there was like the good old German forum, pokerstrategy.com. That was a thing. And, uh, we had like a Vegas guide for that. That, that was pretty much my Bible for, for going to Vegas. And I was like, yeah, I've, I've read that, that one one trip report about a pool party that was awesome so i want to go there i heard about like the there was someone like doing a poker room rating like with one to five stars like trying out all the stuff like playing cash games in the rio in the aria bellagio win etc and how nice it is and that like all that stuff is helpful like when you get there for the first time like, everything is the same like how should you know whether you want to play in aria bellagio rio or win and then you know, now, like, just hearing the name triggers something in you. And it's like, yeah, I'm not sure whether I want to go there. Or, like, yeah, that's the place to be. You know? And then, uh, I mean, where to go? If, if you plan on partying, if you plan on seeing some high-stakes player to take photos, if you plan on um, having good expensive food, or if you plan on having good cheap food, you know, it's like it's all out there in the, in the poker community. And, and it's just like people need to get in touch or, uh, yeah, listen to Joey's advice. I guess that's the best thing you can do. Yeah, that's a great, great, great point you put out there. Even the taking photos of players, I think people really love that. Maybe some etiquette on how to take photos of people too and how to approach them. And especially, you know, during the series when people get overwhelmed or beat down or when it's day 35 and you're down 700,000 and, you know, you don't want to necessarily, you're just trying to make it through the summer, man. Like, I, I remember one, one, one guy. I mean, 
uh, I was, I guess I was always super friendly and I, it was kind of, kind of fun when people stopped by and like asking, Hey, are you this guy? Like, can we take a photo or something? But, but one guy really got me. Like I was there at the cash out in Rio, which is usually a good thing, you know, like, okay, you are pissed that you didn't win the event, but I was there. I cashed the hundred K on my second bullet for 150 K. So. And I had the whole cashier team like seeing me cashing for 150K and they were like, congratulations. It was like such a great, great thing. Like 150K, great job. Like, like, uh, like expecting lots of tip. And like, I don't know. And then I, I was already pissed by like the whole process. And then he was like coming up to me like, oh, I've seen you there. I've seen you have, you have won lots of money. Like, uh, and aren't you that guy? And then starting a story, like a very sad story. It, it, it was like, oh yeah, I would have had a son in your, in your age now. And like telling me his, his sad story about like the death of his son, like that I, I can't remember, but it was like, that was a very, I don't know how to get out. That was like really, really uncomfortable situation for me. And I had no clue how to get out of it. I was just like, walking I, I mean i don't want to be mean i want to be friendly like talking and I, I was just pretty much hoping for a spot there in the hallway meeting some people to like get out of that situation that was i don't know that was just uh, weird That's, but every, every other situation was great and fun <laughs> oh man yeah yeah oh, my gosh man you're that's that's pretty i don't know how i would have dealt with that i, I probably would have been tilted and then feel better i guess about things and then yeah i don't know what i would have said yeah i don't know it's a, yeah it's a weird spot so well, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. avika a, a very similar topic but not really avika skijik says does anyone know a product joe uses in his hair did he ever say so i i uh use i don't really man listen what i could do is i go get my hair cut and they put product in my hair and i just buy all the products and i try out all these different products so Right now, I have, I have a little bit of this one in, but I also, I uh, I woke up and then I, I didn't take a shower. So my hair has that yesterday kind of uh, look to it as well too, because I did it yesterday for Poker After Dark. So I still have some of that product in there. So this is like a second day, I think, hairstyle that kind of happens. It can only happen. You never had that stuff in where it's like day one, you know, whatever, but day two, it looks kind of fire when you wake up. So that, that's-, that's I mean, what I, I'm, I'm not like I was never using too much. Like I'm, I'm more the, I take a shower and then I use the towel and then I leave it like that, you know? Yeah. That's a good <laughs> approach too. I mean, it looks good there if that's what you did. That was, that was my style, you know, like maybe doing like, like this once, you know, like, okay, it's fine. And, uh, yeah, but yeah, so, but, but sometimes, you know, and then it's when you're, when you go out partying and then you're just like drunk or just like, I mean, you don't do a shit and you fall asleep. And then the next morning it's like, just like, it kind of looks like second day, but kind of cool, kind of, you know, exactly, like, yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> You're like, yeah, hey, okay, I look good today. Perfect. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, looks like we got some guy asking for when you get up out of the shower and just like, uh oh, your hair dries. And it's like, sometimes you think, like, well, that looks great, actually. And sometimes it's like, this is a total mess. Like, and it's not even like when it's longer or short. It's like, I don't know, it's just random. 100%, 100% agree. I, 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 I don't even know how that happens. I think maybe sometimes it has to do with the towel dry where sometimes you might dry it over or something or down. And then sometimes you might just dry it fucking crazy. And then all of a sudden it just goes nuts like that. I don't know. Maybe there is like a towel drying strat that's next level. In the, <laughs> Probably, in the, yeah. Uh, yeah. in like the hairstyle course that we don't take. There's got to be like a, a, a upswing poker for hairstyle, doesn't there? Like a, like a course. I mean, that Hulk, I mean. He's the end boss, I would say, you know, and I mean, maybe like, did you see those April Fool's things from Upswing? That was hilarious. I mean, oh. we could get the Vanessa Selps and Doug Polk for hairstyle coaching. <laughs> yeah, I did see those. I don't know if Doug, how responsible Doug was for making those, but uh, I know he was responsible for distributing those out there. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm not sure how much he's really paying much attention to things like that. So good. A couple of questions here from the chat. Daniel Ganser, Joey. Please ask Steph about online NLH. We have four people that said NLH power rankings and his opponent on Katzer's game or his opinion. I'm sorry. On Katzer's game. Thanks. On which game? Uh, Katzer. K. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. And what, what was that? 
before, like a power ranking? I don't know. Power ranking, Stefan. You know how people. Or no limit hole in cash game. No limit Texas hole in the Cadillac of poker, sir. I I don't know. Like everyone says, Linus is the best. I wasn't playing those guys. I know that bit too easy is really go good. I know that who else plays those things? Uh, I mean, whoever is playing. I I've seen Munes Star Stefan eleven two 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 like two Russians. They were battling three-handed uh, NL ten k. Um, I think yeah, Katsor. I, he was he was part of the guys that battled a little on two k. He's a really good player. Um, yeah, like I I haven't played it too much. Like those guys are all pretty good. Um, yeah, hard hard like, to get in there for a real power rank. I can't give you the number one, two, three, and four and five, but I'll put my good friend Linus Love in number one because I just follow the herd and like trust them. Linus Love number one, huh? I've I've heard of like um, a good friend of mine is uh, doing like that that climbing thing. Bo is bouldering a word as well in English? Yeah, bouldering. Yep, yeah. that's climbing. And, and, and he has seen uh, the one and only Linus Love there every now and then. Like uh, he's he's uh, in the team sports now, not in the team solver anymore. He's he's working out there. Linus Love is. Yeah. Interesting. Maybe I got to message him and see if he. We can get him on the pod finally here. We and hey, not not what not anymore. Twenty four seven grind and solve. Wow, are you serious? I mean, listen, you can't do that forever. You got to get yourself out the house sometimes. I'm pretty sure yeah, everyone's everyone growing up. Everyone is growing up. My God, Linus Love, man. I'm, I'm, I'm. Maybe how much money do you think he won before he decided that he was going to get into the get into the team? That's what happened. That's the logical progression. Once you win a lot and you get a little bored, you start doing some doing a challenge like bouldering. But especially bouldering is a self challenge. Yes, yeah, I mean always. Especially for him, like he was like the first time he showed up at two plus two, he had that goal of like being the best. And like, I mean, if you get there and everyone starts telling you that you are the best, I think like the motivation decreases a little to like, yeah, and you start enjoying life a little more, which is a good thing, I, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, because I've used those comments as motivation for most of my life in poker. And then once I got to a certain point, you know, people stop telling you, oh, you suck at this, suck at that. I'm like, eh, I mean, maybe you sometimes need comments like that to get you, get you, because now people say like, oh, like you, you talk, you know, like they say the those dumbest things. It's not even, it's not even real insults, basically what people say that, that about me nowadays. So it's, you know, at least before, maybe it's more self-belief now that I have. And, and whereas back in the day, I was a little bit more insecure about my ability and where they said things, I was like, yeah, fuck you. I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to work hard and kind of get better at that. It's like, yeah, same. Like, it was that, that last week was so sick. Like, I was grinding so much. I was mixing limits from, from NL 500 to 10K. Cool. And it's, it's different about which things you really care about. You know, it's, I could have a great session on 10K and be up like a lot, but lose like 10 stacks straight on Zoom 500. I will be pissed because the BB graph looks shit. And like, the, like that Zoom 500 is not really for like the big money. It's like, Sure, you make money there, or maybe not if you lose. But uh, it's it's like ah, this is like the my old thing. Like I want to have a nice graph there, and that's like important. Like I want to. Then I had it. One guy was was um, apparently watching the replay, and I was just like the when I started there playing again, I was just going crazy. Like just really that non GTO non stuff. Like really putting an assumption out there. And then playing the max exploit for that. If I think he falls there, I turn like pretty much second. If I think he falls nuts, I turn second nuts into a bluff. Like this was what I was doing. And like I had this guy texting a friend, like, oh, that goose guy, <laughs> he's just a fish. Is he? Have you seen that? And like that was like, uh, and this is, and well, that that friend of mine just message, like forwarded the message to me pretty much. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, yeah. You sucker. I will show you. Like, I want to have that graph and it hurts so much when it drops. And like, same thing the other way around. If I drop a lot and I'm down infinite on 10K, but I have that great session on Zoom 500 crushing it, I just switch the graph to BB and everything is great. It's like, it's 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 pretty, pretty cool when it's not like, when you don't have the pressure anymore of like the, the um, bankroll to move up in stakes to see like, okay, I have, 10k now this is like my 50 binds for nl 200 uh when will i shot nl 400 and it's really important for my uh like how to continue um uh like whether i win or lose it's like yeah no i will be sitting there tomorrow i think i have a positive expectation i can play it again but like 
this is a thing from heart, like that that nice PP graph on Zoom 500, for example. You, know? you are one of the first people I've heard that also shares this viewpoint on having a sexy graph because th that's always been my. I never even I never really cared how much I had. I was wanted a nice graph, man. I actually I, wanted a, a, a red line. I wanted my red line to be higher than everything. So I was like obsessed with red line for a couple yeah, of years. I've learned that that won't work out in the games I played. That works out for a week when you disappeared before. But it's like, this works out. Actually, it works out on the, like the higher the games it works out. Not yeah, Well, because it's more, you play more bum hunters and you can go crazy. That's ah, so exactly. They're, 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 not, they're not defending at all. The comfort zone, that's like the, the key to red line. Mm. Bum hunter, bum hunter abuse, huh? Like, yeah. I mean, I can imagine you doing the same. Actually, like, I'm one of those guys always, of first for re review reasons, but uh, secondly, always for like, how did the session go? Look at the graph. Oh yeah. And then yeah. I need to finish when I when I shut down the computer. I need like, and the last picture has to be a good looking graph, whatever the session was. Right before, like sometimes if if it ran really bad, I make in whole manager like restart, like start graph. <laughs> Main, yeah? <laughs> or like best thing usually is like what always works is just like zooming out that you go like okay not not this month you go like this year or, or if like this year is shit you go like all time like whatever and then it's like okay it's still it's still nice graph like prove like feel happy I, I have to say i've definitely done that before where if i have a bad day i go let me look at the month and then the months i'm like okay this looks pretty good yeah okay <laughs> Oh man, actually, what well, aura you could filter by stakes sometimes because I I always like to mix a lot of stakes together. So if I'm losing it higher or winning it higher, I'll just mix out the one. I got oh, well this one. You yeah, know. and that's that as well. But like BB graph usually helps. That's the easiest one. I've I've really never messed with the BB graph too much. I don't know why. Normally because I think I liked how the the money looked. I was like, oh, I'm up. if I'm up, like I just wanted to have money wise anyway. So. <laughs> But there was one time when I was I was like a few hundred thousand above EV and I wouldn't post with the EV graph. People were like, oh, post your EV. I'm like, no, I'm not fucking posting. And then when I ran bad, I would always post the EV because I'm yeah, like, oh, yeah. man, I ran here, man. Like, I can't catch a goddamn break. And then I'd, I'd run massively over EV. I'm like, I'm not posting it. I can't. I, I refused to post a graph where I ran above EV because I was convinced that EV gods would somehow strike down on me and punish me for doing something like that. Uh, I mean, like, it's like a small spot, but I think I had it like two days ago, grinding like a small afternoon session, batting a little on 2K. I, I didn't get crushed, but like, like I, I just lost a couple of stacks, but I won every single fucking flip. And like people, like, yeah, how did your session go? Like, and then it's like the other way around, you would be like crying or telling them how how bad you run, and they're like, yeah, it was fine, like evenish, you know? It's like yeah. Have you have you seen the ultimate graph here? The uh, the Cumicon graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is sick. Is this I've the, seen that one? Yeah, is this the Cuma? I just want to show people just again. It's been it's been a it's been a hot second. I did the pod with them before, but let me show you Cumicon's graph in case you haven't seen it. So this was his um, his stakes. He was up seven point four million. Uh, <laughs> up that's, one that's some some graph porn definitely. Yeah, and this was uh this was his graph up here, up seven million with the red line. This is the most beautiful graph I've ever seen in my entire life. And the red line drops a little in the end, don't you think so? His red line? I mean, like there's a cut in the red line where it like starts not increasing anymore. Yeah, I wonder what he did. It starts right about yeah. here, halfway halfway through. Also, it looks like the profit line kind of stayed up at the same rate, but the red line kind of Maybe that's why he quit. He got bored. He was playing his style that he was playing was too boring for a while, and and maybe yeah. that's why he wanted to quit. <laughs> that does seem like it. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen that graph, I did a podcast with Cumicon last year. Yeah, I get poker rock hard too. That's my new thing. I've been saying at the table. I go poker hard, like poker rock hard. When you just flop the fucking nuts with the nut redraw, and you got the foot, the the action player leading out into you. It's like there's not a harder feeling than that. You're just so like, oh yeah, like this is fucking this. The money's getting in. We're about to stack this guy. There's just man, not much a better feeling than that in a poker hand. Yeah, so it uh, gets, it gets me excited here. Let me find some other questions in this chat, man. Do you have any shout you want to give, Stefan? Well, I guess I well one shout out. Uh, my girlfriend is watching. I guess shout out to yeah. your girlfriend. So shout out to her, uh, and well shout out to all the guys from the Zoom 500 pool. I I got lots of messages like uh, hey like 
hey, are you streaming again tonight? Like they want to see whether they can like see the replay or anything. Or some people were even messaging like, hey, I'm, I'm looking uh, forward to your podcast with Joey. So I guess uh, lots of the Zoom 500 guys are out there. You're playing one of the greatest game in the world with uh, way too much rake and way too less rake back. That's all. I mean, your your videos, their highlight videos are really good, man. I, I don't even play No Limit and I do not watch No Limit, but I have been watching the vids. And that's that's uh that was one of the big reasons why I reached out to the pod on the first week. But it's my first week back, and I was like, who do I want to have on? I was like, well, Garrett, you know, Garrett's my do you watch Garrett at all? You ever see live at the bike or any of uh, Garrett's hands? I've never played there, but I I've seen like some some highlight hands and always enjoyed him. He's like, I don't know, he's like sitting, he has that boss like aura sitting there on that high stakes table. I love that a lot. I love that a lot. Me too, man. I love it. Yeah. I, I'm having him on. And then I was like, who else do I want to have on? I go, well, Andrew, you know, it's my guy. So I want to have Andrew on. And then I was thinking, I was like, I think I want to step it on too. You know, like you're doing a lot of content now. Getting your, I, just, I just want to catch up. And I've been wanting to catch up back with you for a little bit and kind of see how things are going with poker and, and, and life. And they'll help me with out there. So people are. <laughs> Wait, someone said I'm not Tasha, I'm not talking PLO. Are you playing any pop little Omaha, Stefan at all? The great game, PLO? Uh, I, I started to go in the variance roller coaster and started playing some short deck, but uh no PLO. Mm, missing out, buddy. It's a great, it's a it's a yeah. great I had the, I had the spot, I guess, two two, maybe already three years ago, uh, where I was like pretty much on I guess the on the peak of my cash game career, just before turning into a, a tournament guy a little. Um, and I was in Australia with two other guys that started learning PLO mm -hmm. and that was like in, in a really, really good way, actually, like they, how they were working was impressive, but I was like, yeah, I don't know, like starting a new game right now where I feel like I can make more money than any time before playing my game just feels wrong, you know? And, I uh, well, I love to have that security knowing there, like that was the spot where I, I knew every player I was playing so much and I like, okay, I will try to like not maybe play this guy too much. That was Red Baron times. Um, but like this bum hunter, I know exactly what his problems are. Those guys in Zoom 500, I was like, yeah, that was where I made my money on 2K and 5K. And I was like, yeah, like no way. I started learning something new. Now it's like, now I would kind of love it, but it's like, I don't know. Now starting, now it's short deck. I started, I started learning short deck. So it's, what, what, what do you what do you think the things that you might need to improve on in your own game at, at online cash game? Because you mentioned that you know top hunter you put yourself in, or you, but you wouldn't put yourself as one of the best. What ways do you think that you can work at your game? And is it only solver related, or do you think there are other things as well? Yeah, it's um just like being more precisely with every single decision. Like it's pretty sick when you replay some hands of the good guys. Like that's why I love playing some games where I was a slight underdog, I would say. It's like, well, you face those check raises, get to see a hand, and it's like, yeah, well, that king 10 would be not okay, but that king 10 with the king of spades is definitely like even mixed in 60% of the time. It's like, it fits so often together. Um, what I think I would need to improve is definitely um, um, like one thing, just like being very precise with that. But in some pools, that does not matter when it's about exploiting. When you have a spot on the table, which is where the real money is made, I guess that's not the main thing. It's uh, that people got way more aggressive. And that was like always a natural thing for me. I'm really good when it comes to narrow ranges, I would say. Just like counting a couple of combos that feels natural to me. But that pure aggression. And then like when people, I mean, now nowadays check rest frequencies are a different thing. Like... Small C bets, small check raise. Um, even when you have the range disadvantage, that was not a thing before, right? People are now check raising their king six on the freaking king six four, you know, uh, not king six on the queen six four, you know, like shit like that. And like, and it's just like what to float exactly, when to bet, which sizings. That's like, uh, like handling that that way, like that tire aggression is like my main thing that I'm not too comfortable with. Mm. Yeah. And it's the only way to improve with that is just really trying to be mindful of those moments in game when they happen and then review those hands after the session and then mix yeah, it. But it's looking the spots. I always need that security that I know, okay, I've looked at that spot. I know exactly how it works. So like 
what I did now was just playing, look it up, seeing, okay, I made a mistake, he played great, or the other way around. And then, like, I'm good at remembering those things. And uh, then I will, like, the same spot, I will play good again. And then the next step is, okay, I see what he's doing differently, and then I go for the exploit. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, not there yet for some spots, you know? And, um, and yeah, this is this is pretty much my way, way of working. And, um, yeah, what else did I want to say? Well, yeah, exactly. In, in those spots where I don't really feel I've had the look at the solver, well, I have, like, I guess this is fine. I guess this is okay, but I can't break it down to, like, the combination level pretty much. There, I, like, even against good guys, I get that feeling of playing so many hands against a very different player pool, like, from back in the day. So it's like, yeah, that spot, they always have it, or that spot, they always don't have it, which is like not really true nowadays anymore. Maybe mm -hmm. still for some, but not for the majority of players where my heart always goes like, if if this is GTO and you want it just a little here and there, my heart always goes me to tell here or there uh, with like any bluff catcher, you know? And the key is now to see like, okay, this is the better bluff catcher for that reason. And everyone is capable of like doing the real stuff. You know, those guys, Nowadays, it's not like the. It's. I, I, it always sounds a little mean when I say that, but the nowadays the the very good grinders that came up the last years, are not necessarily the the smartest guys in the world. Like back then, you had the Ike Haxons, you had the Phil Galfons, you had the Ben eighty six. You talk with them, and you know, well, I better don't play against that guy because he's just smarter. You know, like how in the world could that end up positive for me? But nowadays, with a solver, you just need very hardworking guys. You know, like it's just work hard. Remember those things. The content is out there. You don't have to be the smartest kid in the world to figure out that this is played this way. You, you can look at it. You have like that genius thing in your black box down there and it tells you how to play. Just remember it, you know, and if people are putting in the hours, yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to, to, to beat them then. Mm. And so, I, I, I'm not in that state where I want to put in like the infinite solver hours. Right. Maybe a little, but so where, 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 where are the goals sit for you right now then? What's sort of the thing that you're chasing towards or or trying to get to? Um well definitely the Zoom 500 graph. <laughs> just like proving myself, uh, or like let's say 1k, 2k, you can add that. Just like proving myself that I'm doing well there. It's not like I'm not outclassed, you know. Um but I mean, so it's like still midterm. I'm like, yeah, I'm. I'm not really sure. Like, I, I won't stay forever in the poker world. It's. It's more like, like finding something. That's like the main goal: finding something that I enjoy as much as I enjoyed studying and learning poker four years ago. Which is like, I don't know. Like, Fedor has that every week. I feel like. With everything he he sees around him, he's super interested. I'm like, yeah, maybe interesting for you, but it's like nothing for me. You know, like with most most of the stuff, just like, yeah. But I th I think there is more stuff out there that I would enjoy. So it's like, uh, yeah, I have to get in in, in more different things. I'm uh, yeah. Let's see. That sounds like uh, how I used to be. I was like, I don't know what else, nothing else excites me outside of poker. And then once I started having, doing the podcast and I started talking with people like back in the day, Lafort, Lafort, I mean, Sean Lafort was his name. And he talked about dieting. And I was like, I have never heard any of this in my entire life. I'm like, wait, you like, you don't, you, you only eat, drink a lot of water. You eat nuts. Like you don't eat fast food. Sometimes you have a pizza on like a cheat day. I was like, what are you talking about? So then that was the first, I swear to God, it's ridiculous to the sound. That was the first time I ever learned about what the hell dieting really was from Lafort. Yeah, I've seen the the Lafort, like one of the Lafort podcasts. Yeah. And that, that was when I started learning about dieting. I was like, okay, learn about fitness, learn about food, learn about how to be more GTO when it comes to your workouts and everything like that. And But that came from direct conversation about different topics with some other people. And then I started learning, reading a lot more and like trying to figure out, okay, what else excites me outside of poker? And what happened was too many things excite me outside of poker. So maybe it's not a bad spot to be in where you're like, Nothing, nothing. I'm trying to find something, but I can't. Maybe that's a kind of take it slow rather than do the Fedor thing where it's every week you got a new thing, yeah, a new project, a new thing. I, mean, like, I, I really enjoy being in the poker world. Like, 
even as well like having a name out there is kind of a cool thing like I, i'm connected to so many people like uh i mean people ask me when they have a final table right I have like so many kind of random people you have probably never heard of that just uh, ask me and i'm kind of friends with like, like can you help me give me some suggestions I, I really like that kind of coaching part um and now the like the streaming as well just like i guess that is it's like fine for me in a natural way as well to like play three four tables of zoom like answering questions uh like explain things in an easy way this is something i, I really enjoy like working with people that have the thrill for something you know like not like that teacher in school that has to teach things that that yeah. everyone hates and doesn't want to give a shit about mm -hmm. but like uh helping people with things they are thrilled about that's like where where i gain a lot of joy from that's that's great let's yeah, see you, okay. yeah, you I, I, I won't be one of those streamers that does it for entertaining like every day and try to get like twitch money and i don't i don't even know how it really works but like let's see let's see how things go yeah, you explain hands very, very well, man. Yeah, I, the way you the way you break them down and it's just it's you make it's so a natural thing. I'm like, has he been? Was he? Did he like stream before? Like we don't know or something? Like I, the way you explain hands is it, it's just it's very unique. It's not. Yeah, it's not. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it's unique to people that watch Latin Element, but to me, when I watch it, it just it really resonates with me. And I think that's the, the main reason I enjoy watches because I think I can take things away and then apply it to the way I think about poker when it comes to Pot Omaha. So it's not just no limit hold them specific which i found i find the most interesting yeah i think like i guess that's just like it comes from talking so many hands. like i always had my groups where i was pretty much the guy explaining the most i mm -hmm. guess and uh i've just i guess was well, two days ago like uh watched uh the like youtube video of phil galfon's first stream which was like uh, i guess uh yeah someone someone posted on twitter like that was great how he breaks down things and it was like I was even like comparing it a little <clears throat> and that was really fun. I mean, his, his stream was so great. It was PLO and he does the same thing for me. Like I have no clue of PLO ranges, but like he talks about it. And he even adds like when he did it, exploits like that he just like, I feel it. But what I, I felt like was a, like he was not the most natural one to always talk about his thought process. I don't know whether you have seen it. It was sometimes like- I saw it, yeah. Just give me a moment. I have to think this one through and like his dream machine working up there and while doing that he couldn't talk well and then like he, he placed the hand he well i don't know what, whether it was highlights or he was just winning every single hand but uh it was like and he always like having the right decision for the one hand well i don't know whether it works like that but it was and then he explains it afterwards and that was like that was really 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 impressive to watch as well yeah that that's uh that's how he's been in his training videos for a very long time. I basically learned PLO from watching his vids on uh, all the sites that he's been a part of and now run it once. But yeah, I he learned NL with the uh, sauce on run it once. You like the NL video, NL sauce videos? Oh, yeah, the same thing, like just having, so being like so smart like him and then explaining things in like the most simple way. That's like what I enjoyed a lot. Sauce is, I haven't watched, I, I kind of watched some of his vids, but I didn't really watch too many of them on uh, on Run at Once for the Nolan Hold in the past few years. I think when I was playing a lot more poker, I, I would watch all the vids I could find. I mean, I'd watch everything. I was kind of a, uh, I went a little crazy with the videos. I, I tried to watch as many as I could and try to take things as way as many as I could. And um, yeah, that worked out very well. I mean, it's crazy. You have the best players in the world stuff and telling you how to play in videos. It's, uh, you're, you'd be an idiot not to take advantage of that, man. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. Uh I think it was actually Charlie Carroll posting that, like what, like on, on Twitter, like what a world we live in, just like poker wise nowadays. You have like, you have all the footage out there pretty much. You can watch like even other streamers are doing like maybe not like top, top level, but watching Lex is, I mean, I'm not watching poker streams, but like have a look at it for a second, like is entertaining and you learn from like how to play tournaments. And even like, I mean, who else do you have like Tonka and like I mean obviously Phil Galf on stream is is the the biggest highlight in the world in the world you know and it's like stuff like that just all for free out there you have raise your Ed raise your edge videos on YouTube as well from Ben CB like stuff like that it's it's insane yeah I've watched a few of vids about him uh where he talks he seems like he's got a very 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 strong mindset when it comes to when it comes to poker the mental side of things he sounds like he's got that pretty under control so yeah, a lot, a lot to learn from him, man, out there. A lot to learn from all these guys out there. It's uh, 
good good time to be learning poker. That's what I know it's about learning tournament. When I was uh, studying for PCA 25K, I was like, wait, there's a site where you can just like play a fake tournament and they'll give you strategies and there's all these chuck. You ever heard of the, you know the site? I have no clue. I mean, listen, I'm not saying they're the best players or how, how the artificial intelligence is, but it's called, uh, I, I, I got it confused. I was just playing it the other day. I think it's like advancedpokertraining.com. Yeah, advanced, advancedpokertraining.com. They have a basically an AI simulator where you can pretend that you're playing a daily tournament, uh, World Series poker main event, nine max, six max, final table, beat the pro, heads up, sit and goes, these, these trainer spots where they give you jacks over and over again in a spot. And then they'll give you some t t tips and advice. And I don't know how accurate the tips or advice are, but I, so I like, I play a fake main event on there. <laughs> and, I mean, I just see like the, the, the ads that I have to smile about always advanced poker training helped Kui Tommy Gun win the 2016 WSOP main event championship. Yeah, that was, that was it probably. <laughs> It was a video ad review by 2017 world champion Scott Blumstein. That's that's <laughs> awesome. Listen, there's a new combat trainer from Canada. Uh, this is great. The quickest path from average to world class player. So I guess you are a world class no limit hole in tournament player now. Uh, no, no, I am not. <laughs> no. But this was what this was one of the things I used, and then uh, and then Dom Dom gave me some stuff as well, and then actually uh, uh, Patrick talked to me a little bit. Pads, shout out to Pads. He helped me out a little bit too as well. So. It was very fun. Like I, I liked learning about it, but then I played it and then I played PLO and I was like, man, I got to stick to PLO. I'm too much. Yeah, let's, let's, let's cut this 25 K out of, out of, out of this, uh, out of this podcast. I guess that was like the literally worst tour tournament I've, I've ever like, like I've ever experienced like exposure, not exposure wise, like how to say, like, uh, I made lots of small swaps just like, and I don't know, 80% survived day one, I guess of the field, 80, 85%. I think I had three out of twenty people left after day one. It was that was the sickest feeling. Like everyone was looking looking so forward to that to that tournament, uh, and like I was done after day one. That's it. Wow. <laughs> so wait, eighty percent made day two. I think eighty or eight, even eighty. Like no one busted on day one. Pretty much, it started wow. so deep. But like, yeah, every piece I had was done. <laughs> it was like after three yeah. hours, we had uh, Reiner, Corai, Dom, myself sitting together, like chilling that was was over GG. i made day two i thought I, I thought i did something but now now i realize i might not have done something special i was like man day two like fuck, you were okay. better than any other german out there so it's i what you were better than any german out there that's, yeah, that's i'm, I'm 100 percent better at tournament than uh than the germans as a fat well i am german as well too so I always think that's why I, I'm able to win at poker is because I have some sort of German in me. I just have like, an insane work ethic and I, I don't know. I just win. I'm not sure why. I <laughs> can't explain it more. It must be the German in me. So uh, this, uh, this Vienna says, ask Stefan why he uses Boyd Yakovsky's avatar. Batsyakovsky, Mikita. Oh, he spelled that wrong. Yeah. Fish 2000. Yeah, I mean, it's like you have different like things it's like whether it's how it's translated from the russian version sometimes it's bodjakovsky some, sometimes it's, Bodiakowski. it's like okay so oh okay. yeah that actually well, i actually don't have him anymore uh as an avatar it's just like that's a, a thing that we had in in uh in the german crew like with fedor and reiner that we always uh had an avatar like to catch the run good like when someone wanted we took this uh won an event we took this avatar so I, I think I had Fedor and like Fedor did the other thing because he had all the luck around him anyways. And um, he chose an avatar who, who he wanted to be the next lucky one. So he had Reiner, he had myself before 2017, before I started winning things. Uh, uh, and it all worked out. And now Mikita had a great year. I mean, I, I couldn't live with a Justin Bonomo avatar. So I went for Mikita. And uh, now Mikita is over. It's a new year. I have a new guy. I have this... Um, this uh, Finnish guy who won the 25k and Patrick Antonius, Patrick Antonius, Patrick Antonius challenge. What are you What are you calling it that for? <laughs> it's, it's, I, I think it's so ridiculous to have like I don't know. It sounds like it's his name is five times in every headline of that event. It's like it's so fun. Like I I I, I would have loved to to be there. I could I couldn't make it, but it's like it's so fun to read it to see like his um. I mean, I was reading the poker news, like Patrick Antonius wins main event or is like some event in Patrick Antonius poker challenge. It's like, I don't know. That's fun.
May, maybe uh, my personal he, humor. He won the twenty-eight thousand dollar high roller against uh, against Bustoville. Yanni Yakum 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 and Nenning. Yeah. Fucking names, man. My guy. Finnish guy. <laughs> guy's a Finnish Palomino player. Yeah. Yeah. He's a coach on Reddit once too, but yeah, I, uh, he's actually the most. I think he's one of the most talkative Finnish people I've met. Was uh was Yanni, which I don't even Did know. If know. know. <laughs> yeah, most of the Finnish guys like they don't. Yeah, they're very uh, very quiet. Most talk I have Sam Vausten, um, European, was the most talkative I met, but he was drunk at that point, so. Yeah, I think when they get drunk, they like. I think the other day, did you see this stream? They did a high stakes PLO stream, and I guess Sigmund was started making out with another guy at the table. Yeah. I, I don't like. I don't know. I got. Do we get an explanation for why he's making out with another guy at the table? They probably have something in them, and that and it and it stays in them. It stays in them, and then like all of a sudden, you know, like they explode. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah, you Stefan, you ever been at a poker table and another guy started making out with another guy once they got drunk? Because I, I've never, I've never experienced this. Not yet, no. <laughs> I want to. But I, I don't want to be. I like to watch. I, I want to be at the table. I don't want to be the guy making out with the guy. I just want to see uh, because it's, it's a unique moment. I mean, listen, if you're in a game and two of the dudes start making out with each other and it's not in a way where they're together, you're in a pretty good fucking game. Okay, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> right. I mean, I've I've seen uh, like. I watched for two, three hours that cash game stream on the side, uh, which Cora was playing, and they had that like every hour a round of shots, something like that. And they had in the stream they had the shot counter. It was like the, and we we were always talking with Petrangelo to do that like a one beer per level tournament, right? And they just did it with shots for the cash game. H how great is that game? Like, and if I mean everyone agreed before, and that's just like that game loosened up. And uh, I mean, you had you had like some of the Finnish or like businessmen or like fun players, but you had uh, Korai there drinking his shots. You had um, Timothy Adams there drinking his shots. Uh, it's like, and not one. It's like there was a couple. It was a good atmosphere. So I'm told this is called something Finnish poker. I believe it is where they take a shot an hour. I think this is a Finnish thing. Okay, yeah, it's a great idea. I love it. I like the whole one beer per level tournament. It's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm more a beer than a shot guy, so it's. <laughs> yeah, you you who came up with this idea for the beer o'clock? Was this uh? Because I know it seems like you popularized it. So in my mind, it's I associate it with you. I think I put it in the poker world. Yeah, I mean, it has been out there, like somewhere else, I guess. But yeah, it's, I, I think yeah, I, I started it, it's last it's uh, last level beer, and yeah, I guess last level beer is the thing that I always said not beer o'clock but does does every i put i wrote that down on my note for i put beer o'clock as my reminder for the for the topic here so that's i probably wrote this down and maybe it's a name maybe that's what the but i like last beer level too yeah that should okay so i think i i is it illegal okay hold on i have a clip we're gonna play it <laughs> so i have a clip of the moment in question jungle man appears at the table too man everyone looks a little bit uh let's let's put this up here all right, if you guys are uh, don't want to watch two dudes make out, just pause it, okay? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say right now. So, oh, yeah. Here we go. So Zygmunt's right here in uh, in the blue hoodie. Here, and let's just take it from the top here. 30-second clip. So they're talking. Great table. I mean, Jungle, Patrick, don't know the other guys, but it looks like a great table. What are they? He kisses him on the cheek. He looks at Patrick. No, don't do it. Stop it. Stop it. Oh my god! What is happening? Oh my god. Okay. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Welcome to the Patrick Antonius, Patrick Antonius, Patrick Antonius tournament, baby. Uh. <laughs> Oh my god, man. Wow, that's a great game right there. Hi, yeah, yeah. It's a pot. You don't see that at a Texas Hold'em table. I'll tell you that right now, my uh, You need more cards. Oh my gosh. This is a state high stakes poker, exactly, man. My God. <laughs> Stefan, what do you what do you think the secrets are to crushing poker, man? What do you what, if you had to give some people out there your number one or number two piece of poker advice, if they want to start crushing poker, what, what would it, what would that be? Uh Number one is, I guess, your favorite one. It's uh, just work ethic. It's like, 
you gotta you gotta be after it you gotta be after it and number two is uh surround yourself with the right people mm -hmm. I mean, that helps for number one as well, like pushing each other, talking to the right people. I guess that's it. Like, I mean, I always had number one and with number two, I was just crazy lucky. Um, so this is this is all you need. I mean, it, it helps if you're a smart guy, but uh, overall, like it's, that, that's, that's, I guess actually that's all you need nowadays. Well, we could also argue that those two things could help you out in most things that you do too. With you have, if you have a good work ethic where you're consistent, I think like the, the same answer for if you, do you want to be successful? What do you need to be successful at anything? Like, right. You know, right. Or at anything that is very competitive, like in other areas, you might need to be creative or anything, you know, but um, yeah, I think be successful in a competitive environment that that fits pretty well. Those two things. Yeah, I think if you are consistent, put your work in, put your study in, and the surrounding yourself with people. I mean, you kind of mentioned your crew is maybe breaking up a little bit. Have you uh, restocked the the group of people that you have in terms of poker friends and talking hands and talking online cash game hands and stuff like that? Um. Well, um, I mean, for me, it's a little special because I have that cash game background, then tournaments. Now maybe I. I, I'm not sure yet whether I want to play a little ca more cash game again. Probably yes. Um, so I know all the people, and I—I I mean, who did I chat to? Like I have another uh, very good German player I, I talk to on a daily basis. Um, I have well, still my good poker friends around. Like I'm not probably not putting in too much. Like I mean, I'm I'm fine with the solver mainly, but um, yeah, it helps having other people playing Zoom 500 as well. Talk, if you want to talk about villains for example um yeah like i mean i'm i'm even like chatting with the guys i'm playing against i'm, I'm chat i was chatting pretty much every day the last days with bit too easy for example um yeah it's pretty pretty easy you have a big pool of players that are so that you are so willing to chat about all kinds of shit you've been able to find new people to talk with and stuff like that then yeah. okay cool yeah it's that's like, only new people you know them anyways so it's just like yeah refresh that um that uh poker relation a little like if exactly. you're that that's yeah that, i think that's a tough thing that some people like don't want to do or they're nervous to do is that if they stop talking to someone for a while they're maybe hesitant to reach back out but yeah i think that's really important to keep up with either people that you can talk poker with or find new people to talk poker with and putting yourself out there saying what's up you know kind of making that initial communication i think is something that yeah. more should be willing to do Wait. It's was or still is like way tougher when you're on the rise and you want to get up there because like what's the thing you deliver? You know, you are like the new new guy there. Like, hey, can I talk poker content with you or what do you think about that hand? I mean, it's it's not the time of the forums anymore where you post a hand history and ask for advice. You know, that was this is where I met poker people in the beginning, I guess. Um Nowadays, I don't know whether you chat in Twitch streams and, and come together in Skype groups and stuff. I don't know how, how it works nowadays if you're just like having no one, no like real life group of, of people that you talk poker with. If you just found that thing as your new new hobby, pretty much it's still tough to find the right people, I guess. But if you like, I mean, if you really want it, it's, it's not that tough either. Yeah, I think it is It is different now where before it was two plus two. Now, I, I don't really know. Maybe it's Facebook groups or training site forum groups or stuff like that. But that's a good good question about where is the best place to go meet other people because it's easy for us to say, yeah, surround yourself with people. Like, you know a lot of people. I know a lot of people. No matter what we play, we're going to be able to find somebody. But unfortunately, most people aren't in that position where they have access to every single person in the entire poker world. So it's like when we say it, you say it to me. I'm like, yeah, like. Fuck yeah, like starting to sell people. Like that's awesome. That's easy. But yeah. and then I think back to the struggle that some people probably have out there where they might not have any results or like, you know, who like they don't necessarily like know who to talk to or where to find that person. So I think just an example is for me, I found people on at my casino when I started playing. I talked to people in the one two game. And then when I started playing online, I found other 10 cent, 25 cent players on Poker Stars and who happen to live in my city of Chicago. So we start hanging out, talking hands constantly. 
Then on 2 plus 2, I just post it constantly. So you could post in your own forum and you could participate in a Twitch chat or a YouTube comment section for a vlogger or something like that, a Facebook group, and, and sort of put your ideas out there, see who else puts ideas that are similar to yours out there, try to connect with people that you find similar in terms of the way that they think or anything like that, and then just put the hands in there, keep working, try to build a group together and and kind of stay consistent with it. That's probably would be my advice for people out there if they're trying to wonder where can I find someone or find people to talk with. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's the main thing. Just yeah. finding people. But it's, yeah. It's I just, find all my roommates on 2 plus 2, bro. That was my, yeah. I moved to San Diego because of a guy I found on 2 plus 2 and we just packed up from Chicago and we're like, let's get the fuck out of here and we didn't have much, but we, we had like a combined 15 K roll together or something like that. But we were, we were determined to make it. And, uh, we, we all drew up San Diego. How did the other guy do? Unfortunately. So, all right. So here's, here's the story. He was playing 10 cent, 25 cent. I was playing like 10 cent, 25 cent, 20 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent dollar. And, uh, mainly 50 cent dollar, but I still bounced down. I was kind of crazy. So I had a little bit higher bankroll than him. He, we went to San Diego I started grinding every day, all day long. I was a fucking machine and I would take shots all the time at higher stakes. I did my 50,000 hands in a day challenge there, the prop bet. And unfortunately for him, he just, I don't know, he, he had too many bills. Like my bills weren't a lot. My bill was just my rent, but he had some loans. He had school debt. He had about three $3,000 plus in debt each month. So he could never make enough playing to cut to build a bankroll and then cover that and the stress just got so much on him i believe that eventually he'd be borrowed he borrowed two thousand dollars to someone and then you know he'd fall the next he'd have to make 3k a month at 25 cent 50 cent just to be able to break even with this month so i think that just overwhelmed him and then he just stopped playing and got dejected and then moved back home into indiana and got a job and uh that's where he's still at now yeah that's that sounds really tough if you like need if you can't build you have no chance of building a bankroll just like i mean all the people that i know started even in school or at university where like you did not need a shit, you know and uh yeah like if i win 100 bucks in a month my bankroll is 100 bucks higher you know exactly yeah that's how mine was man that's, that's how it works you know yeah poker bankroll is like a high score there it's not leaving the poker bankroll you know it's just it's in there yeah, that that this was a very uh, like an epiphany for me in a way because I was like, bro, what's the problem here? Like, just play more, build the roll up. He's like, dude, I gotta pay this amount of money. I was like, well, that's a fucking lot of money, and I I don't know how you can overcome that, and I can understand how it would fuck with you mentally as well too, and just feeling like you're never. You have to rely on winnings. That's like, whew, that's tough. Yeah, yeah, when you don't have much money to begin with. So, I mean, he took a chance to move to San Diego. Like I said, it was a gamble. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, a for sure thing. We both could end up having to go back home. But for me, I was just so, I was like, there's no chance I'm going back home, man. There's not a fucking, <laughs> like, no, I will die out here before I go back home, man. I just, every day I was playing eight, 10 hours a day, would watch videos to go to sleep. After I was done, I would watch videos. I'd watch poker team shows. Like that's, you know, I don't think it's a healthy way to live being poker 24 seven, but you know that was what i thought i needed to do at that point in time to have success at poker so that's why the yeah, whole yeah i mean in that state it's just a whole lot of fun too it's just like that's the thing you wake up and this is like most of the time the thing you really want to do the most was mm -hmm. it i guess all of every day there was nothing yeah. i didn't want to do it there was nothing else man every day i'd wake up i'd go to the like i remember i try to think now like you cause i'm sure you do this you come sit wake up sit down you're like you're groggy you got a glass of water you open up the computer you load up all the tables like that was just a like a common occurrence sort of thing like that to do i mean like i i, I told already that like the last week was a little like traveling back in time into the like good old cash game times where i was just like having my life back home and and kept grinding i was like i don't know when but i i got up at 11 or so <laughs> i went uh, switched on the computer started um reviewing the the uh last night's sessions putting in some solver work ordering some food because like no way i could leave uh to to buy something myself you know i had to order food save time <laughs> get the first session in no action but still like zoom was running get the action in like study some more solver work and like four or five o'clock recreational player appears on acr 10k uh, 
I get a call, that was fun. Got a call from my girlfriend on the side. We were talking. I was playing ACR 10K on this uh, like same time. My flatmate comes in with a buddy. He's like, "Hey, we're leaving to that burger place now that you like a lot too." Like, <laughs> "What? You're ordering burgers? Can you order one for me too?" Like, "No, no. We are we are really going to that place." Like, still on the phone. Like, "Hey guys, I'm I can't leave." Like that guy. Like, it's not possible. Like, yeah, <laughs> I had that feeling like. It's not okay if I leave now. If I leave that now, like, it wouldn't be my job. Like, it's like you know, it's it, I cannot do it. I really had that feeling. Um, well, Fair. and then I, I they didn't even bring me a burger because they had other things to do. I had to order food again, and I kept playing straight until seven a.m. in the morning. Wow! And I was like, and then at seven, I realized like, yeah, what the fuck? I got up at eleven, went to my computer, I stood up twice to open up the door for the delivery service and probably i took a couple of pisses in between but that that was my day pretty cool day and uh yeah very old school. that is old school right there that's that really like traveling back in time but i don't know it was it's draining it's kind of stressful but i enjoyed it so much at the same time and well then what i learned from last uh from from like three, four, five years ago is the next day I got up and went outside, enjoy the sun and, and uh, did some sports and just went back to the grind when it got dark. So I guess this is some more GTO there. But um, how, was how many times do you think in your poker career you've did you've done that day? That's been your day because I'm sure it doesn't happen as often now. But how many times do you think that happened to you in the past? I mean, I, I was cheating a little by moving to Brighton mm. because in England there's bad weather and for me there was no reason to leave the flat anyways. <laughs> so pretty much every day I, I stayed in Brighton, that was my day. Wow. I mean, I tried to not stay there too often. Like, I mean, still, it's tough to do SNE with two cards cash game. You need to play lots of hands. PLO rakes like more rake is better. PLO is there is, is a better candidate. I, that's why I switched to PLO. We got more VPPs. <laughs> I, I added like those sit and goes in the end. Like a 5k sit and go is a lot of rake. That was great. Uh, it was like a nice, nice uh, VPP boost. Yeah. Um, but I mean, two years SME, it's like, I don't know. It's a random guess, but must be like days like that, probably just like. 100 to 150 yeah yeah I, I probably did it about a thousand of days like that just probably for that was all, that was it man and then i the, so the the sad thing is though i think about that now and i i'm not like that i don't even i don't know if i have that same heart anymore to just every day just locked in laser focus blinders on nothing else matters pissing in bottles fucking bottled water fast food food delivery Fuck everybody else. Like, I don't know. I don't think I have that in me anymore. And uh, it kind of scares me a little bit because that was always like in the back of my mind. I'm like, I know I can do whatever if I just do this. But I'm like, man, can I still do that? Do I still want to do that? And like, is that a good way to live? And you mentioned how much fun it was, how much fun that is still. Because I still have fun when I do that too with poker. If but you do it once in a while, I guess. Like this, like the, the day after, uh, oh, I, I had like some some lunch. We went to play basketball. And then I came back and I was I was dead. Like I didn't have enough sleep. And like it's different whether you sleep from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. or whether you sleep like during the night. Like at least for me, it feels different. And uh, I was like, well, I went for the grind again, but it's like not that feeling that you want to have in your daily life. Like energy level was really, really low. Um, and yeah, like I wouldn't do it five days straight. Like right. but I think one day it was lots of fun. Yeah, I think what made it so enjoyable previously and still now it brings back the memories is that I think maybe we're just ignorant to what else it could be. And then once you start having success and it's like, what do you work so hard for? What do you make money for? Well, to live a better life or have a better life or travel more and do those other things. Then once you start doing those other things, you start realizing like, hey, I really enjoy doing that. And then at the prospect of going back and to before, you're like, well, I did before to get here. Why am I going to go back there? if I'm already here. So it's sort of, I feel like it's that sort of challenge. 
that we face. Yeah, the main thing is that you have the freedom to do to do like whether you want to do it, then it's fine. And when not, then it's like not a must. I mean, before you had that sick motivation from like, I need to reach that bankroll to play the next level, or I want to get better to like, I always see it still like a computer game, like a video game. Like I want to reach the next level. It's just about, I mean, in poker, it's about money, like NL 200, NL 400, NL 600, NL 1K. Uh, but like, I, I, I want to move up there. I want to compete with those guys. And then like, well, then it's like NL 5K is kind of the end. And now, well, pretty much, Higher stakes are not tougher because they only run around fish. So it's it's mm -hmm. different now. Like, what are the goals? Like, as you said, like I, I do. What do, are am I doing it for? Like, for living a better life? Is that? But the same question is like, how much it still bothers you, or at least it does me a little when you have really like kind of big swings. You know, like when when you have a swingy session on 10k, you can win some money, but you can drop some money as well, and that's mm -hmm. like how how it affects me is still kind of kind of sick um like i mean it's over the next day i think that's a good thing because i'm like rationally i just know well it does not affect my life at all like waking up the next day but still this that feeling i don't know whether it's the feeling of being defeated you know like having kings against aces does not really feel like being defeated that can't be the thing or is it just like the irrational feeling of being pissed about being unlucky in that one spot, mm -hmm. you know, like really getting angry about that one guy that got the three setups in a row for him, you know, that freaking motherfucker. It's it's ridiculous, you know. That's that's still feeling that is that is in at least myself. You know? um, yeah, I don't know whether I need to prime a little mind, but uh, it's like. I kind of enjoy having that as well. So it's, it's I, I have the same thing and I, I kind of enjoy it too. You know, I don't know where the, even though it doesn't, like you said, it has no impact on anything, but still just losing. I don't, it's just fucking tough, right? You're like, the, you know, as you said, these motherfuckers out here, they get lucky. It's like they made, it's they, I don't know what it is either, but even for me, no matter what stakes I play, that's why I like, I play any stake. I still, if I lose, I still get kind of fucking pissed off about it. And I don't know. If, I think I've always been that way, but I was I've been able to control it more when you're playing. You have to. You can, it's like if it affects your play, then you I, have to. I stop. actually enjoy um like uh checking out most of your Instagram stories when you go like play the two five game, sit down with it, because like you have that vibe in, in those posts where you you can really feel as just like seeing it. Um well, he is enjoying himself so much and he's really happy about that now, grinding that big stack there now. Or he's really pissed. He's just really pissed because he misplayed a hand or like as you write it down, you know, like I did something stupid, big stack splashing around bullshit, you know, like yeah. being really pissed when it's like 2-5 or 5-10 or whatever. Like, And I, I mean, I think you said it before. I. I just re uh, read the one about the day one of the uh, poker after dark, where you ended up like with the last hands, like nicely, yeah. or like yeah. oh, let's call it break even. <laughs> like the uh, second day was not good. I mean, this must still feel different, like playing there with the cameras. You didn't do that too often. Oh yeah, no. I mean, I think uh, you know first about the about the win. I guess you know we mentioned goals, right? Like when I play that game at the win, I have a goal. My goal is to get to five k. Like it's yeah. A you know like that's what i love like i have a 5k challenge you buy in 500 you get to 5k like that's so i have a goal every time i go set out there and i i never get mad at anyone but i get fucking pissed at myself man like i get you can kind of feel it i'm i'm, I'm happy that you pick up on this because i am so fu i try to not like let it come out how fucking mad i am myself but whenever i play any hand wrong i get so mad i'm like oh my god why the fuck did i do like i didn't need to do that but yeah the po poke after dark stuff i mean you played on stream a lot and um yeah, it's tough. It, it, it's, it's, I put a lot of pressure on myself playing on a stream like that. And, you know, I don't want to look like an idiot. I made a questionable play against an action player day one that I still, you know, not standard, but, you know, I, I still don't mind the play. But yeah, day, day two, I didn't even have any spots. So I just didn't make any hands. So it wasn't as getting grinded down there. Yeah, I just lost, uh, I think I lost uh, 9K yesterday and I won about 8,000 the first day. So I think I finished down about 975. Which, uh, like he, uh, hearing that, I always have that in me that I need to let it out. I need to talk to someone. Like, and that's pretty damn tough. Four a.m., five a.m. in the morning, and I, I just scroll up here in Skype how I was writing to my uh, high stakes buddy who was playing pretty much the same ga uh, games. 
just to let it out, to let someone know how bad I run or something. I just read it, it was like 4.50 a.m. I, I just translate from German, so it makes it a little tough. Oh, fuck, I'm so mad again. <laughs> full, full deck went pretty well. I just decided to go to bed finally. Then I see that short deck on ACR is running again. Very first hand, I spewed away the 10K with a fucking ace queen off in the, in the squeeze pot. So ridiculous. Because fucking guy has a ridiculous set. He just flats like blah, blah, blah content. He does bullshit. Like in the end, it was just like. And then, like, one hour later, haha, so great. I got it all back, bluffed them away, rolled over the table. I got those suckers. It's so ridiculous, that game. Like, like for like he must wake up and think like what the fuck this idiot like it's ridiculous but in this moment you know like it's just it has to be <laughs> i i personally love messages like that so i maybe he doesn't like him i would love i like love that like you said you like watching the stories like i love messages like that i want to know man like even when anyone i know or my friends they go play and they give me updates like i fucking love the updates man i love like, you're angry tell like tell me you're angry because when I hear someone say like, you know, like, like mentioned Sasha, right? Sasha might message me before and she's like, oh, this motherfucker, you know, this motherfucking guy beat me here. And I'd be like, well, it's okay. You just get it back. But then I'm in that situation. I'm like, this motherfucker got me. <laughs> yeah. <And> so it's like, <laughs> on the other side of it, you're like, calm down. But when you're in the moment, you're like, yes. You know, you kind of get that fired yeah, up. Right? I mean, you don't feel, uh, really feel shame for it like three hours later, but you look at yourself and like, yeah, uh, you're a true professional here. Like it's, I mean, I don't know I, how, you, how you handled that one was great, yeah, but it's just, you know, so I, think it's, I, think I, I prefer it that way than like to just try to keep emotions totally away. You know? Well, that's what I did for a, uh, a period of time. Coincidentally enough, had my most poker success, but uh, I just wasn't a very, uh, I don't think I was a very healthy in life person trying to suppress all of my negative and positive emotions. And I think it showed on me. So, I personally do not want to go back to being that type of way when it comes to. I always made and still make the the difference between sound like poker world and non poker world. Like in the poker world, I think it's totally fine to like tell your bad beat stories and cry around because people understand and they they get in that spot as well. I personally had always had the goal that like when I go to like non poker buddies, play football, play whatever, like do sports. I don't want any one of those guys really having any idea whether I just have a really bad or a really good month or how my last session went. I guess they are because there are lots of people in poker that have that in them that like their how how like how they run just influences their yeah, impacts their their daily life. Like whether they are pissed going shopping or meeting friends or whether they are in a good mood, which is like is very bad i i think like overall and this was was all and i i guess i'm fine with that and one reason i guess i'm fine with that is that i just let it out and blast it off like you have, you would you can talk to so many of the germans and they would always be uh, think like i'm the biggest tilt box but i'm not like i think i'm i'm not at all because i just i like crying and then it's gone you know like i'm not tilting at the table with my cards and splashing chips it's just different uh, Dominic says, can confirm I've received lots of those, those messages from Stefan in the past. So you're right. Yeah. Very, uh, yeah. Dom, Dom is the different way. He's like, yeah, I'll look it up in the solver. <laughs> I played it fine. Great. Let's re-enter it. <laughs> Which pisses me off when, when I have a swap. Like, don't be happy when you lose my money. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Dom, Dom bought a piece of me in the, in the 25k PCA event and, um, <laughs> Once I got a little shorter, I thought, you know, I was like, man, fuck, this might, uh, you know, when I was deep stacked, I was, I was cruising because I played so much deep stacked NL. But then when I got the 40 big blind and 30 big blind, I was like, fuck, man, I just was like, this is, this is. Hitting a pier might be the end of your tournament every single time with that sec death. Right. That's like, cool. I'm terrified every time. I'm like, oh my God, okay. Like, I have the ace check on the button, raise. Like, okay, we're going to go all the way here. <laughs> Kings, perfect. Okay, it's like all right, you know, whatever. <laughs> Fuck this game. Yeah. So it's uh, but they're they're, they're and obviously tournaments. I think are uh, I think they're fun. I see why people love them. It it completely makes sense why people love Melbourne home tournaments. So it uh, Daniel actually Daniel Lewandowski has a good thing. He said, 
How much does your emotions affect your decision at the table? So for me personally, they used to affect it a, a, a lot, but not much anymore. I can I can be tilting and still play the same. But how about for you, Stefan? Because it sounds like it's the same for you. Um, yeah, kind of. But actually, like in the spots where I feel comfortable in, not at all. Like because I just like I I don't let the emotions overtake my rational part. Like that's that's not happening for me. Like I know better, but now I just want to spew in my whatever three bet five bet my pocket threes or something you know like this this won't happen to me like i know i have those ranges i know this spot i will bluff catch here i will do this i will do that uh, when i'm when i'm like in those spots i'm most comfortable with no chance that, that ever happens like i can play super drunk i can play tilted or like after losing a lot that just won't happen to me i'm, I'm very certain about that but as i said before in um as well in, in the spots i'm not comfortable with I have that, I, I show it like that, like I have that, oh, I have that feeling that they always have it or they never have it. And I'm not really sure. And this gets stronger. That's like when your rational part is not really sure, the emotions definitely take over. Mm -hmm. And that gets stronger and stronger. The more tilted you are, the more drunk you are, the more uh, you are in a session, the more down, well, down and tilted is probably the same thing a little, but yeah. That's that's when it can happen. Like when you, I don't know, some, I guess no, not some people. I wanted to say, but probably it's just everyone just is on the more call happy side and on the more aggressive gambly side. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting thought. I'm gonna think about that one a bit more. The idea <laughs> of uh, when you're drunk. I don't play drunk much. It sounds like you play drunk a lot. <laughs> like I'm thinking back. I was I. I drank a bottle of wine yesterday while while having that session until 6 a.m. Gotta admit, like we started watching Champions League, and they were all drinking. With we had a couple of friends here in the in the flat, and I, well, I mean, I've just been to Cambodia, Ooh. and uh, I, I was traveling there for for th three weeks, having vacation, and I, uh, like, it was like I don't know, it was not the first time in my life, but like. The first time in my life that I enjoyed one fruit so much, which was passion fruit, I just loved it so much. And I was uh, I was in the supermarket, and I've I just I've just seen that bottle of wine, which was a Sauvignon Blanc that tasted a little like maracuya and passion fruit. So I, I see that, and like, well, like I mean, I have to. And then I tried it while watching the Champions League match, and well, then the bottle was open. You know, and it was really good. So, um, yeah, I kept drinking it, but that's not, that's not on a daily basis. Just every second, maybe. I'm um, I'm gonna refill this. I have I have a new talent where I can pour things from from this into bottles like this, and 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 always get it right in there. I've been working at this pretty hard. So no matter where I'm at, I have like a, I can try not to spill anything. That's freaking strong. I know. <laughs> It, re it reminds me of, I spent some time in India and it reminds me of because like everything is kind of dirty there and they don't drink out of water bottles or out of cans as we do, right? Oh. I drink like this and they pour it in their mouth like this to not touch the water bottle like, like you did. I can't do it. I would spill it all over my face, but this is like, this is what it reminds me of. I've tried that before and I definitely spill it on my face. Like when you're sharing a drink with somebody and they're like, Hey, you want to sit you? Then you're like, you're doing something yeah. like that. It, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I guess the, <laughs> I definitely have that happen too, man. Uh, let's get some questions from the chat out here, guys. Alan Pham, Dominic Nietzsche and Stefan Sondheimer. Do you see an end game in poker? Do you want to transition to something else? Well, Dom's a businessman technically now. So Dom's a businessman. Yeah. Dom's a businessman. Stefan did, did say he would be interested in that. It's just a matter of finding out what that might be. Yeah, for for now, I'm a cash game uh, tournament uh, streamer, poker player, enjoying life, guy. Esports game, esports person too. NL game, NL NL gaming. Yeah, well, I'm I'm just supporting. Like, uh, I'm not really like part of the. I'm not handling anything of the esports stuff. But I'm watching. I think they were, they were like when we started uh, doing that podcast. They started their next match in the 99 damage first division in Germany. Uh, our guys were playing. I don't know how it went. Well, we need to find out. I don't know what that means, but I'll I'll take your word for. Uh, like, 
Mo, Mo they, underdog, they probably lost, but tomorrow is the next match that I, I might watch that one. It's actually fun. Like it's it's a random computer game that I've never played, but I kind of got into it a little. Sorry, you're playing Counter Strike. Counter Strike, yeah. Okay. And uh, and it's like it's like when it's kind of your team, you really. I mean, I start watching that in a really really different way. Like it's 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 a real sweat you're having. Like the they were playing on a on a LAN uh, in uh, in uh, Vienna like the biggest thing here and there was a counter-strike tournament with finally like price money on top it was like 1k for third uh 1.5k plus two computers for second and like 3k plus five computers like worth total of 12k for first and they our team were the favorites actually they they ended up second but that was like the first real sweat i had like watching that like come on guys like can't be like the <laughs> fucking one on one in the end just like win that shit like i have no game just i it's it's more like I have, like when you have no clue of it and you hope for the best and I, I i look at the maps and i don't get the whole thing i just always look at the and you see like five names here five names there and i always look at who dies because on the map i don't see a shit I'm like yeah we got the first blood pretty much and like celebrating already not understanding whether position is good or anything but it's i can watch that stuff forever <laughs> like when is my team the other guy other stuff doesn't like bores me but it's it's a sweat it's fun fascinating yeah i could see it being interesting if it's your own team or you're associated with and you support i've uh wow i've never thought about that i guess if you gamble on it too it's interesting as well yeah, I haven't started that, but that's it's a good good. Th I think there's even like there's bet. I mean, for the bigger stuff, there's for sure a betting market. I also think my man Mike McDonald did he? I I want to let me make sure he announced it publicly. Hold on a second. Oh, I, I've heard of that. I guess that's fine. Yeah, Mike. Mike. Um, I think he did announce this. I mean, yeah. if I know it, he must have announced it. Yeah, so uh, so Mike McDonald, he had he had poker shares, but now they're expanding it to bet shares, and they do plan to offer other games besides just poker. Because you can poker, you can bet on people for tournaments and take action stuff like that. Now he's going to be having it where you're able to uh, bet on other things as well. I believe esports is in the plans for that too. They just listed it for the Marble Olympics, which I've watched the Marble Olympics on YouTube, and that thing's pretty fucking exciting. So. The Marble Olympics is listed on there as well, too. So I don't know exactly what else he has planned in store for what he's going to be able to bet on. But, uh, yeah, it'll it'll be stuff like esports kind of stuff like that, too. So that's kind of a cool thing for Mike to get into, get out of poker and maybe start making some money in the uh, sports betting world and that sort of world, being the book for that that type of shit. Yeah. It's, uh, well, it's, I, I, I was surprised about myself, like – just like how much fun it is to watch when you have some kind of interest. Like, I mean, it, I sh I do not really care who really wins or, but like it's, if, if you, I mean, I can see myself actually betting on that. Like even just a small amount to make something interesting for me. And yeah. well, I, I use that to like meet up again, again with uh, Stefan Schilhabel and Christian Kristner was sometimes joining. It was like in the last league they were playing, there was uh yeah, another German, Esports league, and uh, there was all the matches were always Monday, like e either seven thirty or nine p.m. It's a perfect time to have a beer with some friends and watch some shit. Like, mm -hmm. great. I agree. I we actually got a question about Austria in the chat. Uh, where was it at? Mo, Mo, Mo. Hold on a second. It's about basketball courts. Where are the best? Joey, please ask Stefan for the best pe best basketball pickup game spot court in Vienna no clue um i think google helps like we always play like in pretty much like a shit place that is uh what's like like what's that called like that is like a street um oh gravel yeah probably and it's like really bad for i mean you can you can have bad injuries there we just play there because it's around the corner of the most of the people now the the whole crew is pretty much looking for the spot like he's looking for um but we thought about in, in winter times like renting uh like a good play indoor place but never happened and now outdoor like it feels like everyone is lazy and is fine with the with the spot we have right now the gravel or, like, you you only go like 50 percent because like uh, falling just kills you yeah you don't want to fall in, in that in that setting at all yeah 
I uh, I'm looking up some Vienna pickup basketball. No, nothing coming up on Google here. Uh, Wayne Wayne Chiang says, Stefan, will you come on to live at the bike? That's in LA, right? <laughs> Le LA, correct. LA Bicycle Casino, Los Angeles. I mean, I won't fly over for random stuff. Like I can see myself being in Vegas and, and then playing too. a good, good game at, at LA, flying over. Okay. Sure. So like, there's there's not a general no, but I, I won't just fly over from Europe for a cash game session. Yes, that makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Alex, uh, this this last name again, buddy. I don't know how to say it. Nauru Savicious. Nauru Savicious. Nauru Savish. Baby stuff. I wish I could show you this name stuff, and maybe you know how to say it better than me. But he says, do you agree with Charlie Carroll's statement? Do not even think about GTO pretty much up to the high stakes. Um, AKA fuck GTO, as Charlie Carroll puts it. Yes. Um, so he makes he like, he puts it out there in like a really like a click baiting way. Um, but in general, what he means with that, I totally agree. Like everyone says, like there's like people that want to make up that story of like GTO is the one thing and exploitative player is the other thing. Like I explain that in every stream and every podcast and everything because I always get it get it asked. And for me, this is two things together. So how can you exploit people? Right? What what's what's like the foundation that like what do you need to know that you can exploit people? Well, you need to do. You need to know what they are doing wrong, right? You can say, "Oh, he's overfolding," but that implies already that you know what would be the right amount of folding. So it's always for me. It's one is GTO the baseline, how the game should be played. Second is collecting reads, um, knowing what villain is doing wrong, and for knowing that you just need to fucking know what would be right. Like you can't say someone's overfolding without knowing what would be right. Like it's just like doesn't make sense, you know. And then third is doing the exploit. So it's like step by step by step. What Charlie means is on non-high stakes, never ever play GTO, like the, the one, what it tells you, because you always have reads, you always have assumptions. Well, the first assumption is country read, for example, right? People from Brazil don't like folding. That's just true on NL5. Or this guy is playing NL5. Don't try to bluff him off the top here. This is a population re read because this exact guy is just playing NL5. So um, that's just so uh, so right. So you should think about GTO because it's just important to know what is right to exploit in the right way. But the move you do at the table in the end should always be the exploitative. Not like, oh, Solver is telling me I should check back 30% and see bet 70. That's bullshit. You, you should... On low stakes, you should always find a reason to do either the one or the other. That what's that's what he means, like explained in a bigger frame, I would say. And I agree one hundred percent. Perfect, perfect, <laughs> perfect clip for Twitter right there. Thank you, thank you, my friend. Thank you, thank you. I think you explained it in a good way that I think more people will be able to uh, instead of fuck GTO. You like this is kind of what he means. So I think you put it very well and. I don't know. I've never been, uh, you know, I, I, GTO is one of my favorite words, but I mean, a lot, a lot of to beat poker is, is exploitative strategy. So yeah. GTO in life is more important. <laughs> GTO in life. Yeah. Like doing things GTO. Like, Oh my God, I'm not doing anything GTO in life. I don't think right now, man, I think I'm, I think I'm very, maybe I, I must be cause I'm, I'm doing pretty yeah, well. It's, it's the same thing. It's just important that you know what would be GTO. Know that you deviate from it. It's fine. If and when you think that what you do is GTO, then you have a problem. Like right. I drank, a, I drank a bottle of wine while grinding a twelve-hour session. Now that's not healthy, not good. But I think it's fine as long as, as I know about it. I think that's where I stand. I know what would GTO would be. It would be wake up eight a.m., nice breakfast, nice eggs, drink a lot of water, call up my friend, meditate, prime my mind, stuff like that. But I choose. <laughs> 2 p.m. and I go play by whatever. Yeah. Like plan already plan ahead of going out of line. I mean, this is like perfect, right? Oh my gosh. Someone said, did Randall play GTO yesterday, Joey? No, no, Randall. Randall talked approximately. Have you played with Randall Emmett before, Stefan? I don't think so, no. This guy does this guy likes to talk, man. He 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 uh yeah, he must have said 
more worse than everyone else combined times three yesterday at the table. So it was, uh, it was, he did not play well PLO, but it's, he's new to PLO. He doesn't want to play PLO. So he only came into town because he knew I was playing and he wanted to come play with me. So that's why he came to town. So, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, still he talks. I don't, I still like him. He's fun. Like I enjoy playing with him. We spent, we hang out sometimes outside of poker. So yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know. It's, it's I think it's entertaining for people at home. So even though he doesn't stop talking very much. Uh, let me see some more comments. Take a couple more questions here, guys. Uh, and then we might wrap things up. Let me give some shout outs, man. Jam and Burton out there in the chat. Jamon Burton. What's up, brother? What's happening? Welcome to the moderator task force. I just wanted to give you an, uh, a wrench because, um, you know, I like to give, I like to give wrenches to people here. Harbs in the chat. Landon Tice, my guy, Landon, my young 19, 20, 21 year old kid trying to make it in the world in poker world. TD, create my own energy. Stu Wunger. What up, puppy? What's going on, brother? Jamon Papi, what's happening? Jimmy Rustler, Kai Schneider. If you're too late, you can go watch it back. Stefan, you got a shout out? You said your girlfriend, you gave her one. Anyone else you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, I mean, I gave one to all the Sim 500 grinders already. Yep. That's that's the most important one. And um, yeah, and then one more. For everyone having last, last beater level, that's important. We got to spread the word there. Um, and the drink wine while grinding. That's another good one. Make Make poker fun again. I, I will only advocate for the first one. He said last beer level is fine. I do not advocate you drink a whole bottle of wine while you're playing a 12 hour session. I can't. A glass, glass. <laughs> a glass. Can, okay, a glass. I can advocate a glass. But is this year, the right platform to give shit to ACR? I feel like I just, I'm distracted by getting that email back here. I have a, I have a new problem. Like they, they have like a withdrawal security block on me. Oh. I tried to, like, I made money there. I tried to withdraw that. It's unfortunately not working. Uh, and I like now I got the whole withdraw security block, whatever. Talk to the live chat today, and they're like, Yeah, it's probably because you tried from another IP and a new device. Like, yeah, probably my, my new laptop, and I was just not in whatever. And now, like, I he told me to, to go for um, to just confirm everything. They want to know my last deposit. We go with that, right? The de yeah. deposit. Um, and um, yeah, it's like I told them, yeah, no clue when that was, probably in 2016. And uh, now he answers me on that email from, from me, like, thank you for confirming. Please feel free to request your payout again, again. And please confirm the following information for us to process your request. Amount for this cash out, Bitcoin address for this cash out, and date and amount of your last deposit. <laughs> it's like, like, fuck. I, I want, let's see whether I can solve that here. So you should be able to, can you log into your account? Yeah, I can log in. You should be able to go to transaction history and the cashier page and you can go to transaction history. It'll pop up uh, either in the browser or in your internet forum and then you can uh, filter it for deposit. Uh, I tried that this afternoon. I didn't find it. It was like all the game action was like every time I bought in for like a 5 pay table or something. Yeah, it's. Um, I remember having to do something like this before on there. But I'll also, you can message them on Twitter too at ACR underscore poker. Obviously, I don't advocate anyone playing ACR. There's too many bots. There's over 65 plus alleged bot accounts right now at Cash Game. So uh, I don't recommend playing Cash Game on there, even though a lot of high stakes guys are playing there. I think high stakes are different than mid stakes and small stakes and micro stakes. That's not what I advocate. If you have to play poker, I'd recommend Global Organition over that one if you're in America. But I just want to preface that, and I have to make sure to say that here. But yeah, I would um, maybe on, on Twitter you could message them to at ACR underscore Poker. Hopefully, so hopefully, hopefully they'll help you out with that. And um, you could also actually I don't know any other other way to check the deposit. Check what date you made the deposit. You got to keep trying, buddy. You got to keep trying. Yeah, it's fun. Maybe fun. Get some player yeah. transfers and get money off that way too. So that also works too. All right, a couple more shouts. Nathan, Nasty Nate. What up, Nathan Kluster? What up, Big Poppy? What's happening? Art for Euro. What up, Art? What's happening, brother? Upswinging JJ, L-A-T-B. What up, JJ? What's happening, brother? What's going on, man? Always doing great work over on the commentating streets on Live at the Bike. What's up, man? Nice to see you in here. Kay Glenn, of course. One more shout out to you. I think I got most people, man. Randy Welch. What up, Poppy? What's happening? Stefan, give the people one piece of poker advice. To wrap it up on one piece of poker advice one piece of life advice uh oh uh, yeah that's always the toughest one i didn't prepare this time like <laughs> one piece of poker advice i mean we had so many pieces of poker advice already i mean uh 
like um, just make sure you treat poker the way you can still love it that's a poker advice like if you think you just make it for making money or you do whatever then it's it's not the thing like make the stuff like how like yeah like i i see how i can enjoy how i can enjoy poker in a way that i take breaks from it and then do this and then play tournaments and then play cash to all enjoy it and not go for like don't force yourself to if you don't feel like it that's the poker advice because then you won't succeed anyways and the life advice oh, i'm not i'm not i'm definitely not the guy for life advice advises that's um yeah I don't think I'm not playing. I don't know. See, I think about this stuff, and I want to. I want to talk about this out with you because I've been thinking about this a lot. I go, man, life advice. Like I'm so fishy. Like I feel like I'm just making so many mistakes. But then you take a look at things, and it's like, well, you're a pretty successful position, right? Like you're 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 available. You can do whatever you want to do. If you want to go anywhere tomorrow, you can go anywhere tomorrow. If you want to do anything tomorrow, you can do anything tomorrow. If you want to connect with most people, you can probably find a way to connect with most people and, and talk to them too. So you've done a lot of good things in life like most people would say those are successful things in life that people work hard to and dream yeah, that's, to be able no, to do that's so like I, it's it's so true when you when you look from uh like at it from from outside but like inside it's just like i don't feel like like that at all like looking at it, it's like yeah cool it's it's well quite successful looks like that's pretty pretty cool but like the inside i'm like yeah, well, I'm just good at that. You know, I'm still like the nice guy, like all the others from from around the corner, and it's like nothing, nothing special that I can that I could tell others now that I kind of well, it's maybe wrong, but like it, it's I think it sounds weird to put me in a position to say like, yeah, I can tell you guys what you need to do different or like what what helps you do do things like to succeed a little more or anything like that. Position is just like feels really weird to me. I guess. Um, well, one life advice is is uh, just watching most of uh, of uh, Joey's podcasts, obviously, because yeah. there were definitely lots of people on there that can really put themselves in a position to give you life advice. We had it before with Sean LeFord. We had, I mean, Phil Galfons, like super smart people. I mean, just like way too many. Like there are so many people, like all a little connected to the poker world, which connects them to you as well because the poker world is one thing and uh and yeah like bill perkins podcast that's like just i mean it's mind-blowing what is out there and these are people that are connected to you in one way and they they really are in the position to tell you what can help you in your life yeah i mean bill perkins obviously uh life life changing wisdom he's given me on the podcast and if i'm if I'm doing the podcast and my life's changing, I'm sure people watching are like, well, you know, I mean, obviously they do because he's turned into what he's turned into in the poker world and he has uh, so much respect and admiration and, and, you know, he can't, he can't do anything wrong right now in poker. It's a very uh, unique position to be in. So yeah, he has no missteps on his, under his belt yet and anything like that. And yeah, he gets universal love. I mean, he's also done awesome things. He got Thirst Lounge 10 so in 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 the fucking the virgin islands down there 10 streamers i mean that's just so cool man they're down there for a year some of these guys are yeah so. just like giving so many opportunities to to people and like share share their emotions that it even atta like attaches others it's like it's it's pretty good I, like i mean i i always screen like it kills infinite time but i always screen the twitter feed and it's like so much good stuff in there it's like it's great uh, okay, two two podcast guest recommendations, Stefan. Podcast guest recommendations. Um, or, or not or not had on either. It could be either one. It could be mm -hmm. a recent one you want to see back. Could be a old school guy. Could be new school guy. Could be someone maybe under the radar that you think maybe deserves some recognition out there. Um <laughs> let me think. He's in the tank. Yeah, in the tank, in the tank. Vogelsang's in the tank right now. Oh, Vogelsang would it would actually be a great candidate. I, like, I talked to him at the Bahamas. It's not that's not that one. We're probably no no public podcast yet. But if I, ever, if I ever want to know something, feel free to message him and ask him a question. So it's okay. Thank you very much. Great. 
I mean, the poker world is, is not too big, you know, like you had most of the, I mean, did you have Antonios, I guess? Not yet, but I'm going to have Patrick on. I'm pretty positive that'll happen uh, sometime in the near future. I mean, I mean, you had all the big names, like the, the ones that I would like to see are pretty much the ones I don't know yet, you know, like the, like the Sean Lefort I've never heard of, or like the, I mean, Bill Perkins was new in that moment for me. Like that is like the ones you learn the most. Like I only know people, or if I think about who to recommend, it's like the people I know already. You know, like right. this is, and then it, the thrill is a little away from for me personally. And it's like I don't know. Yes, people in the chat said European and uh, Philimsies. I think Philimsies. Uh, I've chatted with him on Instagram before, so that actually is possible. That would be definitely very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we talked a bit on Instagram before. That was that was when I was thinking about retiring for poker. So I was like, I'm not talking to anybody in poker anymore. I'm going to retire. So uh, I, I remember uh, you had that guy on the podcast who was battling high stakes for a while. Uh, was it an American guy playing from Mexico? Oh, hey, Cindy. Oh, hey, Cindy. Yeah. And uh, and I, I didn't watch that one. I should do that at some point, I guess. But um, like... Philly Smith would be would be would be sick. Like I know how how much he's battling. I don't know him personally, but I would I would love to hear his views on things like poker and non poker related. Yeah, that'd be uh that'd be a good one. I will uh I'm gonna put that down over here. A couple other names people are mentioning. They mentioned G Man. We're having G Man on tomorrow. Garrett Adelstein, uh, Reagan seventy Scott yeah. Saver. I think Scott. Maybe a bit too easy. He's like a very chilled like totally being in the high stakes cash game world. Um, it's like, I mean, that's like lots of same stories over and over again, but like, I, I, I like talking to, to him. It's like super, like he has clear views on things. And like, I never talked about non poker things with him. That's like, uh, that would be interesting too. Like, uh, I think he, is he from Manchester or something like that? Guy from England, uh, from England, right? Sorry. If you see England, right? Yeah. England. Okay. Yeah. He would, uh, yeah, I'm kind of like the people I think about now. There's so many names in my mind, and they all span all across the poker world. So I always try to narrow it down, and I'm like, all right, who do I want to have on? I'm like, well, I got 100 names here. This is perfect. And then I try to narrow the hundred down. And I'm like, well, these are the people I'm friendliest with. I'll probably go with them first. You know, so I just. Do you ever have Maria Ho? Uh, no, but I'm gonna have her on. I think uh, I gotta actually check back with her. We talked about maybe next week, and if not next week, the week uh, of the first of the first week of May. Well, to her is always fun too and she got great stories and like great views on, on the poker world that's definitely one I, I will enjoy too yeah she's sick man she super i mean working really really hard for so long now man just uh, get uh, super well respected well loved in the community too so yeah i really i, I even i think we had dinner the other time um uh randall had a birthday and she was there i talked to her for a little bit that's like one of my first times really chatting with her so i can definitely see why a lot of people have a lot of positive things to say about her so i'm definitely excited to get her on the pod and get some stories out of her ask some questions get because i don't really know much about her at all but she's been around poker for so long i mean it's just so great i love it so much when people are just like can fall like not fall back like be how they were like during their college time or whatever like when when we just chill at that uh at her apartment like stefan and ryan were playing fifa she just chilling with me on the side drinking beers and wine and like it's you know like you got that that maria in front of the camera being super professional doing a great job you got you know maria on the table just trying to be a very very awesome poker player and mostly mostly doing exactly that and then you have the super chilled like cool to hang out with maria as well so it's like yeah you, you'll love it as well definitely yeah, that's uh i can understand that yeah the professional person and then the off-camera person is a little bit more chill goes with the flow has a good time can hang out with the guys hang out with girls hang out with anybody can get along with anyone like that i think those are you know fun people to know and bring around other groups of people and stuff like that so very good quality to have right there other people people in the chat said a few other names they said mama sita so mama sita is actually going to be on the podcast Have you seen this chick mama sita she plays on live with the bike and uh, she's been in a bunch of the youtube hands no i don't know her name is fucking Mama Sita. Ay, 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 papi. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, so, I know. 
I have I have talked to Mama Sita, and Mama Sita, I believe, will be coming on the podcast officially. I didn't know when I want to throw her in. She's I don't think she's a professional poker player. So like my I was thinking about the guest lineup, Stefan. And I'm like, all right, we're gonna do Nimi, uh, Stefan, Garrett, and then like Fox in and, and Chance, and then uh, you know, Lex and Maria. I'm like, well, where do Mama Sita fits in? I got, I got one more. I got one more. Give me one more. If you get him to come, that would be awesome. Um Shen Huang. Okay, how do I spell his name and who is this? Uh, this is a Chinese guy playing the Super High Rollers over in uh, Macau and traveling to Europe as well sometimes. Okay. Uh, he's playing NL5K and 10K on Stars under um, the screen name Huang33. Okay. Um, and he is like super smart. He is, um, I think he was like, was he like a teaching at uni somewhere? Like somewhere? He's like one of the... Like he's top, 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 top go player. You know that like kind oh, of really, really okay. Um, he's just super, super smart, and he uh, he pretends to be like a stupid fish when he plays, but in reality, I guess when I started like checking him out uh, when he like how he played online, he was like losing somewhere between five to seven BB in like the NL five K rec game, like pretending to be the fish and he's like i guess he got even better and um dominic nietzsche started uh, to to um cross book him versus like some um debatably weaker wrecks in like super high roller events stuff like that yeah and, uh, he, and he's like he's super talkative fun at the table and uh well it's like depends on how like sometimes his english is not the very best sometimes it's great to understand i guess it's like and it changes on a daily basis, but it's like he he's the man. He would be so interesting to to hear stories from like the other <clears throat> from the other side of the world. Yeah, this guy played on the Triton Poker games, correct? I think he was yeah. on um he was on one of the streams I watched, the Triton Poker Triton stream. Poker Stars, um Super High Rollable China he played. Yep, that was where I saw him at. Okay. Yeah, this guy, uh Tan Tan Wan, is that his name? Shan uh Shan S H A N. Okay, this says T A N. Uh, good friend with Fedor, by the way, as well. Like we went out having dinner with uh, him and a uh, uh, Yi Sang, another friend who played some of the high rollers. Uh, that was like super, like really chilling out with those guys. That is, I, I I googled Shan S H A N Wan X U A N. The first picture is Dominic. So uh, <laughs> the, what, what's the first picture? Dominic. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Oh, Tan's a different person. Okay, how many? S H A N, and then it's H U A N G. Oh, okay. Wow, I didn't spell this correctly. I have S H A N X. Poker. You get great. Like, put it in Shan Huang in poker, and like the first pictures is him, him and Fedor, him, him, him and Mustafa Kanit. Oh, this one of Mustafa Kanit. That this is the guy. What the hell? Yeah, I'll have to have, I'll have to have, um, Dom, can you spell, can you spell his name out for me in the chat, please? Like He's just reading, like, I love like reading those headlines. I see his picture and it's like APPT Macau, Dominic Nietzsche, Bubbles, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> or Dom. Oh, Shan Huang. Oh, Shan Huang. Shan. Got it. Got it. That's a different guy. These fucking names, bro. They are. Uh, they all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I got it now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, this guy looks old. What is he talking? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. How old is this guy? Wait, what is this guy's like an old guy? Like 40, 45 ish? I don't this know. This guy's battling on Poker Stars uh, right now, still. Yeah, he played like last week. Wow, that's awesome. Pretty sure, yeah. Okay, this guy's this guy's a, this is a veteran of the game. This isn't a young kid. He, he's 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 a rich guy, but and he's doing it for fun. But he he loves the challenge and he wants to be good. And then like he pre pretends to be a fish, but I'm sure there's some solver installed on his computer, like 100. percent I'll uh, try to get in touch with this guy. He's friends with Fedor, you said. Uh, Fedor got his number for sure, yeah. Okay. Well, I think I actually see I'm getting his number here. But someone said, will I get Fedor on a podcast again? Of course, you know, we have to do a yearly update for Fades. And I do believe he's in Vegas right now. So 
But I, I don't know if that'll happen soon. But I do look forward to the next Fedor podcast because I like to have him on at least once a year to get an update on, on what he's been doing with life, man. I mean, like, we know one day he will be president or prince or king of a country. So uh, we, we got to trust that. that. Do we still think that's the case? Because I don't I don't see progress being made on the presidential front yet. So, But I don't think you become president until you're like 40 or 50 anyway. Yeah, and, and it's like, you know, there are presidents that that first conquer the business world and then then switch, you know? Right, exactly. So I think, well, I think that's what most they do. They go in business like the guy, uh, what's his name? Yang, the guy running for Democratic Party here in America. He uh, you, was a successful businessman. And that's how I, I think he's funding a lot of his campaign. Andrew Yang, I think is his name. So yeah, it's certainly possible that uh, Fedor could take that route. I would not, I would not doubt that at all. So Stefan, we, what else do we have to talk about here? We covered we covered a lot, and I still have half of my topic list left in here. So, we'll have just, to just give me just give me the list. I, I think like whether something is important, and I give you the 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 quick summary of it. But, right. uh, Biggest inspiration right now. <laughs> Biggest like this is so deep stuff. Like uh, I I have no big inspirations. Biggest inspiration. Yeah, no. Let's let's give it. Let's continue the list. I, I just choose what I think is good. Degen stories. Degen story. I mean, like some of the talk were some Degen stories today, I guess. I think so. We covered that topic. That's good. How do you unwind after poker? After Sorry? a poker session? How do you unwind after a poker session? <sighs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Sometimes you dream poker, you know? I do. I put a tweet the other day where I've been dreaming about poker. I have a, I have four cards in my hand. I flop the nuts and I river the nuts and I look at my hand and I have five cards. And then I look back at six and seven and eight and it progressively gets more until I freak out and wake up eventually. So yeah, I've been dreaming about poker a lot lately, man. Yeah. That's been, that's uh. so I've actually found, I've been trying to figure this out how I unwind from poker um, I don't think I ever unwinded from poker before also, but now how do I unwind in general is uh, weed for sure in Vegas. It's legal. So I get, the, that's how I do it. I, I, I drink a beer, but like not after, I mean, when it's live poker, I like to have a nice evening. If it's like, well, but usually the tournaments uh, go, go late in the night and then you just go to bed. Maybe one, that's why you have the beer on the last level already that you can go to bed right away. Like sometimes you just grab some food. You maybe like, relax with some of your poker friends and for like that's my thing then to force them to not talk about poker like that's a that's the biggest thing just grab a drink and now here grinding online she usually i i mean right now i don't have a new series like usually i just uh check out netflix and watch one episode of some kind of shit to not have poker in my in my head like as the last thing i did before going to sleep but right now I, I don't have anything. It's like uh, Netflix is empty. I mm. got it through now. <laughs> You're done with all the shows in the entire world. Now you yeah. got to download Amazon. You got to get yeah. Amazon Prime. They have no, you, they have their own shows on there. It's like so sick when yeah I, I told you I was I was uh, traveling Cambodia and there like Netflix has apparently all the shows that are in the us or somewhere else in the world and in germany and austria they just wait another year to release it so i came back i was like i just watched the newest uh ep like uh news episodes of uh, house of cards came mm -hmm. back to germany it's like that's not available in your country like how, how fucked up is, is that yeah, I'm not sure how it works uh, for the rights for those shows and how the each company works with Netflix and stuff like that. So it's uh, I think every country is different for who license what shows and what sports and what there's different programs that service different things out there. So you know, like for world citizens as we are, and not like buying it to to like one country. It's just traveling and getting killed by by like those Netflix borders is is no good. You got a VPN, it sounds like. Break that TOS. I don't know if that's against TOS, actually, but you can VPN into a different country, Netflix, I believe. Yeah, it's like, you know, when I just, I, I want to lie in my bed, watch it on my TV there, and I did, like, on the computer, okay, I can do all kinds of stuff. It's fine, but yeah, it's yeah. Different, different. All right, I'm wrapping up, guys. Three hours is done. In the mix tomorrow, we're back. 5 p.m. Eastern time. Garrett Adelstein Steen. I can't remember which one, right? Because Feldman told me it's a different pronunciation. 
Garrett Alstein. It's Garrett Alstein. That's what it is. So we're back with Garrett tomorrow. G man, if you want to follow Stefan, hit him up on Twitter at Run Goose Run. Stefan, what's your Instagram name? Uh, at Goose Core, or is it at or just Goose Core? Goose Core on Instagram. If you want to follow Stefan on Instagram, uh, if you want to stay tuned to where he does some streams. I think the best place is probably going to be Twitter or the NLG gaming NL Just gaming. Make sure, like, I'm, I'm personally, I'm not posting too much, but like, if you want to see like the next cash game streams or whatever, and what what the the other guys are streaming, or make sure to at least see the the highlight videos on YouTube. I I mean I. I can just for myself, like I'm not watching whole streams too much. It's more like for entertaining on the side. But if you want to learn like YouTube highlight clips, just make sure to follow No Limit GG there um, or just put in my, I don't know whether it's like underline or dot or whatever, just put in my name there and you'll find it. And um, yeah, that just follow No Limit Gaming on, on Twitter, Instagram. That would be pretty cool. And then, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Next, next stream probably. Um, before Montenegro, first week of May or end of April. And um, yeah. Why are you looking so I'm on your Instagram? Why are you looking so butt? You look like you like kind of like jacked in this photo, bro. Let me let me let me show you this. Look at this. What's happening here, bro? Look at these arms. These uh, look at the vein, little pot. Yeah, it's like super fake. I don't know. Like I, I love yeah, the, like, like, What's going it's, on here? And what is what? what's this? Who's so, this? This is great, huh? Where which one's you? This one? Yeah, sure. Is one of these guys you? Yeah, yeah, the, the small guy. The one on the left? Yeah. Wow. Little young goose core right there. Okay, I like that. Let's see what else you got? Little, little, we're doing a little, uh, maybe it should be a segment, a little deep dive of the Instagram for some reason. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Aria, 2-5, my first time in Vegas. This is your first time in Vegas right here? Yeah. In 2016? Oh no, 2015. Then it was the second time in Vegas. Yeah, this is July 15th, 2016. I like it. But yeah, guys, you want to check out Goose Core, Goose.core with the goose with the. Uh, yeah, the, the photo with the kind of strong arms was just uh, Jonah walked by and took it and sent it to me on WhatsApp afterwards. It's like, I don't know what he did. Wait, what did he do? But Jonah took the photo and like sent it to me on WhatsApp. So that's where I got it from. So he oh. probably. Did some did some tricks there to make me look strong. Oh, he might have. Yeah, Jonah. Jonah. I I sometimes send Jonah photos to to edit like chip stacks, and he brings all the light up, so he makes them look. He pretty knows. Good. He knows his shit, bro. He's a fucking. He's a fucking expert, man. He's sick. <laughs> <laughs> his shit's sick, man. I swear to God, he kind of. I kind of like try to push him outside of his creative boundaries because I feel like he sticks to one place sometimes and forgets to experiment with things outside of that. So. I try to uh, always remind, you know, keep keep kind of going. But he'll be here for – he's coming for summer as well. He'll be here in Vegas for the entire World Series poker. Nice. So he'll be around. If you guys are out here, you'll probably see him with me a little bit. And I think he's going to be working with uh, eSports uh, gaming company. So but that's it, guys. All the comments. Much Jonah, better out there. Jonah, six weeks in Vegas definitely includes some out-of-line nights, I would say. Jonah, six weeks in Vegas will 100% include many nights at a nightclub. That is a feckin' fact. That kid, that kid, no one loves it. I think he's going to own a nightclub at some point in time because he loves the nightclub more than anyone I've ever met in my entire With Richard, probably. He what? With Richard, together. Yeah, King him and King of Las Vegas, Richard Blankenship certainly might be involved in some sort of nightclub endeavor. I could see that. Jonah would be like, he'd be one of the best nightclubs because he talks to everyone. He gets everywhere in the club. You know, he's got the whole... He's a operator to the extreme, man. He's he's killing it. So I'm uh I'm excited to see him again this summer. So I think that's it, guys. Let us know what you think in the chat. Much love. If you watched it this far, first of all, let us know on Twitter, please. Please let us know on Twitter. Let us know. If, you obviously enjoyed it if you watched it this far. So I thank you guys very much for tuning in. It's good to be back in the podcast. I appreciate the support that we get from the people out there on a consistent basis. You guys are awesome. So much love, everybody. Peace out, Stefan. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Thank you.